First Smoke family, special episode today with yours truly, Green Bodhi. You know him as the genetics master, the turp preserver, the guy who's been in the game for 20 plus years, one of the gurus, Green Bodhi. If you don't know, you gotta listen to this episode. We dive deep into genetics, past strains, lost strains, lost terps. We get into psychedelics. We talk about ayahuasca, cactus psychedelics, everything in between. This is an episode you gotta pay attention to. Also, FSOTD.com, we have all the discount codes. We also get you hooked up on the Discord. We have a worldwide Discord that we constantly update and we have all of the news media, discount codes, hookups, all that on there. It's all available on FSOTD.com. Also, DrDabber.com. We get you the hookup. First smoke is the code. It gets you hooked up on DrDabber.com. We're rocking the Anwar Carrots collab, you already know. Such a sick collab. Come on now, they got the Wiz Khalifa collab dropping. First smoke is the discount code. All the discount codes are on FSOTD.com. If you're a grower nationwide, you want deliveries to your commercial spot, GrowGeneration.com, the code is first smoke 10. Also, if you're not happy with your nutrients, Drip Hydro, you already know, they're one of the sponsors for the show. Just like GrowGen and Dr. Dabber, we get you hooked up because of that. And we're about to have Green Bodhi on. Dr. Dabber, GrowGen, Drip Hydro. First smoke of the day. Uh, but we have none other than John Bays of Green Bodie out of Eugene, Oregon. Recover your culture and come back to us with your wisdom. So really exposing our inner workings of our mind with the plants, that's what spawned this green Bodhi. First smoke of the day, fam. I'm excited about this one. Episode 105, creators of elite genetics in the scene, Golden Pineapple, Tenzin Kush, Dog Walker OG, best shit ever, strain after strain, hit after hit. We got the homie John, aka Green Bodhi, sitting with us today on first smoke of the day. I'm super excited about this. Yeah, thanks so much, bro. Really a pleasure to have me here and really psyched to be here, to be honest, you know, so you know, we brought what we could, vibes, everything. So really hyped to get this going and yeah. see what happens here with this little plethora of like fire, I guess, you know? Yeah, Ooh. dude, you brought the bong. I had to, the- you know, cause <laughs> this, this is how we've been smoking out of Eugene forever. So I think we just like probably kick it off like that, right? Yeah, So dude, you brought a bunch of jars. I mean, I mean, absolute fire, bro. I started cracking these and I'm smelling. I'm like, oh, this, this takes me back to like the, the beginning. Mystery? Oh, dude. The, the, so, this, so this is the mystery that's haze. mystery haze that's like the granddaughter of the golden pineapple you know so golden pineapple is a strain that we secured in i don't know what years probably 2004 or so it came my way in eugene as pineapple so we secured that and it was really insane because like we didn't you know we kind of didn't understand that level at that time because what we were you know we had trinity we had big sir holy we had these other strains that were really eugene classic fire strains you know mm-hmm. but this one come in and really took it to that next level um it's yield capacity i mean i at first i think i busted it out in a three gallon pot and got a half pound on it you know so i was like well organic like that okay that's what's up you know and started rocking that really heavy and it became a big production strain because of that reason you know when you're you know organically pulling a pound and a quarter you know pound and a half consistently off of hps is back then organic but then you start pushing two two and a quarter you know like organic you're like this this is the one you know so you know we went pretty full force into that one heavily and just because we liked the high so much it was so crisp so clean so perfect in all these ways and we really didn't even know what we had until I think it was like 2012, 2011, I took a bunch of herb down to Steep Hill, you know, down to Addison. 
And I was like, bro, you know, I hit him up. Hey, man, I heard you guys are in the scene testing and all this stuff. You know, I'm from Eugene and they say I'm kind of like the guy up here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, like it's weird, the inflated senses of egos that we've had over the years and how cool we think we are mm-hmm. until we realize we're fucking completely not, you know. And we're we, part of a bigger puzzle. Yeah, well, I mean, like for sure that, but like at certain points in our life, you know, we think we're the special one, you know, and we realize it's not like that, you know, really the collective is the special thing. And the more we can be basically in that community mind of all aspects of our life and living and how we operate, then it starts to really like blossom some cool shit, you know? So the golden was really huge. And, you know, I I made the hazy Kush out of the golden, which was OG Kush Sage by Trainwreck Purple Affy. OG OG Kush Sage came from THCs and then Put that by the train wreck purple affy which was this strain called the dawn that was going around eugene it was super cracked out super gnarly it was insane you know so i put it by that grabbed a mail of that put it by the golden mm. every single one that came out of that was epic you know like and what's sad is back then we kind of were a little more haphazard because of everything so we were you know trying to reveg cool strains that you you know if you're like oh this isn't a good one and then you smoke and you're like, fuck, you know, it's mm-hmm. a good one, you know? And you already killed the mom and it's like last <laughs> run of the couple strains in the back. You're like, fuck. So anyway, like we, we ran forward with it pretty hard. So through the, through that, you know, the train wreck purple affy by the OG Kush Sage by the pineapple and then just started running out of that, you know, and the mystery haze is basically the back cross of hazy Kush. So hazy Kush, the daughter of the golden mystery haze, like the granddaughter of the golden, but you know, daughter of the hazy. And what's really interesting, I think it's kind of at the end of the road because meaning everything I put to it, it doesn't, it doesn't pollinate well. It doesn't create good offspring, really, in my opinion. Like what I'm looking for has some certain issues that I don't really like so much, you know? And so it's like I noticed that when you get to a strain and you've maybe inbred it a little bit or did whatever, it gets to a certain point where its genetic capacity, I think, is like kind of at the top, you know? It doesn't reverse good. It doesn't all these things. So this is just what I've, I don't know for sure. Cause I'm definitely not a geneticist, but I've found something into that. And especially working with this, um, 89 NL that, it, um, we got through Sinbud and Melvinetics. Um, I really understand a little more now because this is some really root strain to a lot of our, really the foundation to a lot of our genetics. Actually. That's liter- That's exactly what I was going to say is people who haven't smelled a great sativa in 12 to 15 years. This is that. And yeah. not like, Oh, it smells Jackie. Not at all. This is like, Oh, sweet. Like you say, crisp, sweet, floral, uh, skunky, like, Oh man, this is phenomenal, bro. Yeah, and man, and I, I grown like that one. great as well. Thank you, bro. Like grown really this well. This one here. Here's the hazy. That's the mother of the mystery. Let me find the gold. Uh, first, I ha- I have to say I uh, I started cultivating in 2002. The first like 6 to 7 years of my cultivation career, looking back, the strains that are no longer around that I got to just put my fingertips on for just a little bit and try like get a couple runs in and not realize how important those were. A lot of your stuff reminds me of stuff that I haven't seen in 12 to 15 years. Well, I mean, we've been collecting and preserving genetics out of the, you know, out of Oregon and Eugene area for, you know, over 20 years now. Mm -hmm. And, and which is cool about Oregon and it's kind of legal reality of medical and everything. You can house things in a lot of different places, put them in a lot, a lot of different spots. You can have a lot of different styles um, to work off of, meaning like say, you know, because how we've, how we've done it for years is we basically teach people, you know, give them the genetics, teach them the tech. And then depending on the relationship, how much of work we're doing after the fact, you know, yeah. um, depends on the break on the, on the profit share, basically, you know, so how we were doing this for years, that's golden. That is insane. Yeah, that's the this golden pineapple. is the golden pineapple. That's the golden pineapple. Okay. I, I was like, I have to ask, I have to interrupt you and ask <laughs> yeah, you, no. what is this? That's the golden. This is phenomenal, man. So the, the hazy Kush basically was my recreation of Big Sir Holy because we had this Big Sir Holy cut that was going around Eugene for years and it was fucking insane. So the, the hazy Kush is like kind of my recreation owed to that because I, I lost the cut. You know, I, I was one of the last people with it, gave it to a friend. I think he ended up 
killing it, you know. Um, but I was one of the last people holding the true Trinity in that big Sir Holy. I gave it to this one person. He still has the Trinity going. Um, the real trend, not this one. The one that's going around now, I think is the future trend is what it's called. Mm -hmm. It's like that second Trinity that happened. It's that bag seed trend. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's not the trend lav. You know, we had a lavender trend and then we had this other future trend that was prior to the lab, mm -hmm. the Trinity lab. And it reminds me just of that, you know, it, it, it yields better, chunks better, but the Trinity was kind of like the old school one. It didn't, it didn't, it, it wasn't, it wasn't designer weeded today by any means. It was high leaf to brack ratio, all this kind of stuff. And, you know, I mean, the reason even I like, <laughs> it's so funny in like 97, you know, we were buying like, you know, $50, three gram wet eights of trend mm -hmm. in Eugene still. So I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, when I, I'm going to grow, I'm going to like get four, four gram bags for 45, you know? Oh, you're the solid guy, dude. <laughs> I'll start doing yeah. that. That was my thing. And then always, you know, we always weighed over everything, you know? We're weighing true pounds, not these 448 pounds, you know, doing 454 plus five, you know, and make like 460 gram pounds. You know, people yeah. are psyched on that, you know? Yeah, they get to try it and move. It's smart. It's longevity wise, even for the grower, it's smart. I mean, you call it a grower's pound for a reason, yeah, you know, it's not yeah. because of light, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, what's interesting, you bring this up and I think I, I've personally had this experience, but the inverse of the quality or like how good a plan is as far as like a keeper and it hits all the boxes is also inverted on how easy it is to grow, how easy it is to pollinate, how we finicky plants, hard to grow plants, leaf to bract ratio, all the stuff that's like, oh, this doesn't make it a great grow, but man, is it good. It what? almost, it, there's a, there's a center point where they meet and then it keeps going, but there's definitely like if this thing does three pounds a light and or two two plus a light and is easy to tr it's rare that you find a, a a real keeper in that for sure and i i mean for me most of my breeding and what i'm kind of dialing into is really like i mean because you know we were trimming all our own weed back in the day so you're really going for this like high brack to leaf ratio you mm -hmm. know you're and the and how they grow you know like really you know i like how like when you look at a an evergreen right mm -hmm. You have multiple different types of evergreens, but the noble fir has this kind of cool look to it, you know? And so, like, <laughs> I mean, like, very symmetrical, mm -hmm. very, very spaced out, you know? So, I like, I always think of that when I'm selecting my, you know, like what I'm going for in structure, what I'm going for in a male or female, it really all comes down to, you know, low leaf to brack ratio. And, and really, the, obviously, the terps in the field. But mm -hmm. for me, there's something going on that, that, it's something a little different, you know, because when I see the plant, I notice the plant, it has something deeper, you know, and I think that subtle intuition that we're, that the plant's kind of guiding us through mm -hmm. is really something that once we all start to open up our, our mind to that and our reality to that, it really starts to guide us in a certain way, you know, so that's kind of been my relationship with the plant because like one time me and, my, me and my buddy, we were out, you know, and we we're, we we're eating a bunch of L and just like out in the woods shooting guns and then we got too high and started driving, you know, and, you know, by the end of the drive, like we were coming down from, um, coming down from the mountains, this area called West Fur by like Oak Ridge, you know, and I remember I was so high, you know, I was like, we're listening to widespread panic, you know, and cause it was back then, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> anyway. And the road, you know, just looked like a pink laffy taffy roller coaster, you know? And I'm like, yeah, I'm driving, you know, I'm just trying to stay between the lines. Didn't care really what's what's i didn't really care what's happening you know or what's like going down but i knew if i stayed in between the lines i'd be good you know <laughs> in between the and, lines and, and, and it was just sides. like it's yeah. the gnarly you know like you know it was some l25 from zandos it was like kind of like bat level and we, <laughs> what we did is we were kind of we ran out so we just threw the bottle in the jug of water you know we just start drinking the water we're out shooting and we're like, oh, we're getting a little too high for guns. <laughs> let's, yeah, yeah. let's go, you know? There's places people only dream of going. I've been there. Too. so anyhow that goes on and you know so but when i came home you know 
I came home to the grill. We're like, we're high, you know? I go into my room. He had one room. I had one room, you know? This was like 90, I think 98, maybe. Wow, early. 99, yeah. maybe, something in there. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I think we might have had carbon filters by then, but, you know, like what was funny is I was like the first one to get a carbon filter from this place, uh, American Ag up in Portland. It was like a huge grow store, you know? I remember I got, I'm like, Greg, dude, you gotta get me one of these filters, you know? And he's like, what? It's like mountain air carbon filter. He's great like, one. Great quality one too. Mountain air is awesome. <laughs> dude. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that being said, like, um, so I get into my room, you know, and I look and when I get in there, like all the leaves start, like, you know how the leaves track the light or track mm-hmm. the sun. It like started tracking towards me. It looked like I'm like, you fucking kidding. You know, and I'm watching and I'm like vibing, you know, really hard and everything's just like, Go. you know, I was I'm like, the light. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, And these things are, we're really connected and vibing, mm-hmm. you know? And so that was around the same time I read this book called The uh, Secret Life of Plants, you know? And starts talking about all these relationships and all these studies they're doing on, you know, the connectivity of plants and their t- caretaker. And, you know, how even if the caretaker is in a different area, has a, gets in a bad mood, but is the one caring for those plants, the plants kind of feel it and start mm-hmm. to alter and shift, you know? So I was like, oh, interesting. And then anyway, you know, so it was a lot of... um really kind of self-discovery in your own relationship with yourself and the plant, you know? And, and for me, this plant's kind of been a really, I mean, it's like my non asshole medicine, you know, like Mm -hmm. if if I'm going to be a prick, if I'm going to be a something or, you know, if I smoke, it won't happen, you know, it'll, I'll be able to observe myself better. I'll be able to take the time and, and I noticed all these things when I was younger because I had social anxiety and I'd get really high, you know, and I'd be the one with the weed getting everyone high. And next thing I know, I'm like, you don't want to act like a dork, you know, you want to be cool, you know, or do you wanna, especially if you have social anxiety and you're like, you know, I'm half Korean, half white. So I'd never been accepted. You know, it's like, there's a recent thing that this whole like, you know, <laughs> exotics, you know, <laughs> it's like in humanity, you know, <laughs> it wasn't, you know, 80s, 90s. It wasn't so much like that, you know, mm. it was, I felt pretty outside on a lot of ways. So it was like, you're trying to, you want to fit in, you know, you just want to be a part of something. You just want to help. You want to do something that's like, you know, so this plant really exposes yourself to mm-hmm. yourself a lot, you know, and especially if you're smoking the right medicine, you know, if you're smoking, the, you can smoke this stuff that don't do that. But a lot of strains that, you know, I have a really high energy. I'm like, you know, they wanted me on Ritalin when I was like seven, but my dad moved instead moved us and he didn't get me on drugs and all that but like i was one of those kids you know lighting fires at the school and shit and like and you find sativas work for you really well huge you know like huge for me Mm -hmm. you know sativas are really big um but more 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 like i like the hybridized sativas that are you know maybe say 60 70 percent sativa 30 percent indica or you know hybrid or root or alpha whatever it's like that blend make something special happen to me, you know? And I feel the same way, you know, and really, and so getting back to that golden pineapple though, you know, when I, I was, what I was saying is what I started realizing, you know, cause I started doing a lot of work in Oakland, doing a lot of work down there. You moved around a lot. Well, even in an early age, I yeah, saw Georgia, Oregon. Yeah. I mean, on and on. I it lived was, in Guam, you know, yeah. like, you know, it's like, so always been like that, you know? So, but doing a lot of consulting in the Bay area, you know, cause you know, 2010, 11, 12, Oakland was kind of popping, you know, and um, the Bay Area was kind of going off and yeah. it was hot, you know. So we were down there doing because the music scene was cracking and the weed scene was cracking and all this kind of like hipster scene was really like popping off hard there, too, you know. Um, and it was a really cool thing. So we're down there. We're doing a lot of work, you know, whatever. I, I hear about Steep Hill Labs, you know, I'm like, OK, hit up Addison. I was like, yo, Addison, I got I. I kind, of, I kind of hear I'm the kind of the guy, you know, and in Eugene, I was basically the one like holding a lot of genetics. I housed whatever I thought was the best of the best. You know, all these dudes were working, you know, sour diesel, great white shark. Those were kind of, or Oregon pineapple. These oh, were like God, three strains. Great white shark. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> it was a unique one, dude. Oh man. dude. Anyway. So like, so I was the one that had different things, you know, so my buddies, I'd come bring whatever. So anyway, you get the reputation in one way or another that, you know, I'm a weirdo. So I care of quality and try to go that direction all the time, whether, you you know, how you're trimming, how you're doing everything. 
Um, so anyway, I go down and, you know, I tell Addison, oh yeah, man, I think I'm, I, you know, I'm, I might have something special, you know, he's all, oh yeah, bro. You don't, you don't get it, bro. You don't know how, how many people tell us this. I was like, ah, yeah, I know. I, I even feel stupid talking to you about it, you know, cause I don't like to blow myself up in any way, but I think I have something, you know, they, then everyone around here says so. And, you know, and we're, we're from being from Eugene and Oregon, we're kind of proud of that culture, you know, what, what it did for cannabis, what it did for, you know smoking utensils you know it all kind of genetics it all kind of all kind of stemmed back to snodgrass if you're talking glass you know and then if you're talking genetics we just a lot of the old school heads mm -hmm. they came up there and plus we have Oregon country fair the whole dead fam everything and that's like you know eugene kind of the northern tip of the silk road of the west coast kind of you know so it's For sure. <laughs> like it's a big scene thing happened in there yeah. you know on the especially on the psychedelic front they you know? allowed some freedom well, Keezy and everything and everything he did for the West Coast and the scene and all that fam and what they did, they pushed it to the to the limit and then way past that limit. You know, there was no limit. kind of they pushed but, it. And so you're you know, because you're coming from a place of having grown hundreds of genetics at this point And you're like, this one is something different. You know, so you're telling them you're trying to convey that to them. And they're well, saying, yeah, everyone comes in and says they got the best OG. And then it's the same OG we've already put in the phylosis or whatever. Right. It's like a hundred different names, the exact same genetic. I mean, so I get, I get both sides, right? Like totally. he's thinking, oh yeah, yeah, we've heard this. And then it ends up being the same thing we've already tested, but you're like, no, I've grown hundreds of strains at this point or a hundred plus this one's different. Well, it was all of what I brought. I brought a whole, I did this whole thing by a bunch of jars, you know, and Addison didn't even meet with me at the time, you know, I, I, I wasn't cool enough yet, you know? <laughs> so he sent his boy Wilson, you know, Oh, buddy. Wilson came and I just, we're, we're at this place called the side sidebar, you know, it was by the lake over there, lake, um, you know, in Oakland there, this really cool little restaurant called the sidebar, you know, we, we, we go there and I we go in the car and I bust out all the jars, you know, I just, Oh, this is mystery. haze. this is a hazy kush. He's all, and this is what's so funny about culture at that time, these dudes didn't even know how the fuck I was picking the weed by not having them labeled even. And I was like, what? We don't label jars, bro. These are like my kids. <laughs> how would I not know my kid's Dude. name? <laughs> yeah. So like we were laughing, you know, and I'm just busting one out after another, after another, after another, you know? And he's all, wow, wow. These are insane. You know, whatever. Cool, cool, cool. Next thing you know, I get a call from Addison like three days later, you know? Hey man, Yo, what's up, bro? This is Addison. You know, like, you know, Addy is. He's like, he's a character and a half, you know? I love that guy. He's so funny, bro. But anyway, he's all, yo, man. He's all, we got a link, dude, because like we've tested 35,000 samples to this point, you know? And everything you brought us crushed everything we've ever sampled. The highest we'd hit at that point was 19.4, I think. And it was the one that, you know, this one dude won the cannabis cup with some strain. I don't know what it was, but it was 19.4%. He's all, the lowest thing you brought in was 22%. And the highest was 24.7, which was that golden pineapple. And I was like, oh, what's that mean? Because yeah. I didn't even like, I don't know what the fuck their percentage is. And I didn't care, you know? Mm -hmm. He's all, dude. <laughs> and then, so then the relationship built with Addison, you know? And we basically, they did this whole um, kind of uh, nitrogen packed, you know, lab tested display everything and and basically our herb was their first release of that thing you know that's cool and so like he did that whole thing because we were doing a lot of work in california mm -hmm. so we were able to like work within the lines you know because and that's the thing is it's like each state at that time there was only a few actually but they have their parameters that you can work in so if you're a consultant you just come and tells people how to do everything exactly make sure they do it dialed and everything and then if it can meet that brand you know, quality, mm -hmm. then it's in that brand, you yeah. know? So that this has been happening for a long time because it's how we did it. You know, otherwise you get in trouble. You can't have like all this stuff. But if your buddy has an A lighter and your other buddy has a 10 lighter and your other buddy has a six lighter and your other buddy has a 12 lighter. And next thing you know, you, you got a, quite a few lights under your, you know, how you're doing it. And that's when we got a really good understanding of the differences of different people growing this similar SOP, mm -hmm. what each style of person will do um, differently, what their character, what their work ethic, what their logic capacity, what that all does, and their ability to follow instructions. Because that's the hardest part in the whole thing. Because we have the SOP, it's completely dialed. But a lot of people, their levels of narcissism are higher than others. Mm. And what's really been interesting in this, in this thing is that you can give everyone everything, the genetics, 
the SOP, the everything. And they will think they're doing just because they're like, they don't tell you, you know, they might change. Oh, instead of giving five milliliters of, of this blood meal, I'm going to give seven. And it's, it's now, you know, they, they take ownership really quick. You know, my he, buddy told me that he uses this. I'm going to do this and, and they won't know. And then when it's better, all these I'll, crazy I'll, I'll rep then, you know? ego things, dude, though. the worst. And, and that's what I noticed with cannabis. I think it exacerbates the ego mm, more than almost anything in the same context as it'll exacerbate humbleness, you know, meaning it'll, it'll humble you quicker than anything. Cause I mean, I've, I've melted through the whole planet on LSD or different things, but you, you have too much herb in the wrong way, edible form, whatever. It's a different experience. You know, you think you're going to die actually. Sometimes you're like, everything's like <laughs> closing in you're on you. Like, you know, and then you have to really get into the meditation of impermanence and these different things. Cause like, you know, I've, I've put people out with herb with, and they can drink a glass of ayahuasca, you know, and it won't affect them as much as if you take, you know, I don't know, however many milligrams of some decarboxylated edi edible or a tincture. Cause we used to just do it in tincture form. You know, we'd, we'd extract with alcohol. We'd run that down, take all the alcohol off, bring it to saturation level. And then we put that into, you know, at the time, whatever we could carry it with. Almost like an RSO. Yeah. It, totally yeah. an RSO. Yeah. Except different tech, but we lost a lot of the medical purpose behind this over the last 10 years. For sure. When we started, I know like a lot of it was under the medical guys. And like a lot of us weren't joking about that. A lot oh. of us weren't like just using that to oh. get legal. That was something that we've seen work for family members, friends, I feel like we've come away from that because the money drives everything, but man, the medical side of this is still so important and people forget a lot about it. I, I like tip my hat at people that still continue to put out good RSO and now the solventless RSO and, right. and just anything towards the medical side to like, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And that's why some of these genetics are so important too, because some of these terpenes and exactly. the medicinal benefits exactly. of these strains, once they're lost, that's it. I mean, like with, with these golden strains, you know, the humulene, osamine, uh, terpinaline that are in these, those are known antidepressants, known appetite suppressants, no, you know, and so like for me, I'm kind of like this energy. I don't eat, you know, I eat like once a day at night, I'll drink, you know, coffee with heavy cream, organic, and just kind of like, that's kind of my mode, you know, cause I'm like that, you know, and, and these strains help me do that to where I can continue on my life without the types of suffering that inflict my mind and certain aspects of things, you know, but like you smoke some hazy Kush, a normal person smokes it. They get bugged out. You know, they can't handle it. Like I was with, we did a show with this. Um, we used to do a lot of music and stuff with other people and not me personally, but I managed some, a band and we did a show with a uh, gift of gab from black delicious. Oh, um, cool. Anyway. So, you know, he opened for my friend there doing a new year's Eve show. And like my homies like, Hey man, I gave him a nug out your jar, bro. I said, which one, dude? He's all the one that was on the top. It was so dank. I was like, that was hazy Kush, bro. He's all, and his, his face just got white. Cause he can't, this dude can't smoke hazy Kush. It bugs him out. And he's all like, why'd you do that, bro? You should have asked me. He's all, oh, I didn't know. And then sure enough, dude, 35, 40 minutes into Gab show, he comes off stage, you know? And then my buddy's walking down the hallway backstage. And he's all like, Hey man, meet my Dr. John, you know? I was like, oh, something's up, you know. Gab's like, how'd I sound, bro? It was out. I, I hurt my back. Wait, wait, what he said for he's like, oh man, I think I threw my back out. He's all, but how'd I sound? I was like, oh, it's like that, you know? Yeah. I was like, let's go, let's go, man. So we go in the room, talk him down for an hour, bro. Like he's drinking Heineken, smoking cigs, and he, he didn't have very good vision. You know, he passed away, but his vision was really poor, you know? And so like, even on, he couldn't see anyone out there, you know, when he and this is a strong, uh, high terpene strain, oh which makes a, people don't understand. It's mm -hmm. like, Oh, high THC. Now things are in the thirties. It's like hit you a good two, three, four percent on, on terpenes and it'll spin your day Especially out. Especially with a 20 plus percenter and you're on a three, 4% terpene level. Yep. It's like, you're like, <laughs> you're like, Whoa, uh, uh, a Van Gogh was, painting. It was cool. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm like. Thinking about mortality, all the aspects of my life. Get my introspective whole, quick. You know, what I've done and have I done not. Oh, my gosh. You know, and 
Nothing teaches you better than that, but... We're right here, our favorite place to go. You know, where the pros go to grow, at Grow Generation. Over 60 stores nationwide, either in-store or online. Use our code. First Smoke 10. Family, get online if you're shopping for grow goods. First Smoke 10. Or in-store anywhere in the U.S. Tell them the First Smoke family sent you. We'll see you there. Some people don't like that teaching, you know? Like, for me, I'm like, I always kind of kneeled into that and leaned into that style because... It's always been my style, you know. I wanted to, I wanted to get it. I wanted, I was, I had a fear of death when I was younger, so I wanted to put myself right next to that in every way I could, you know, and like really see who I am there, you know. That's why, you know, twenty years ago, plus, you know, went down to Peru to the first Amazonian shamanic conference um, in Iquitos, and that's where I actually come in contact with Buddhism. Actually, is down there, you know. Met my first teacher there and everything, and um, you know, and utilizing these plants utilizing all these different things, ayahuasca, all this stuff to push you to this death phase so you can actually, dude, I want you to try something. Yeah, you know, no, you're, you're I, I love hearing out. this. I want to hear more about yeah, it. Yeah, totally. Because like, but I've smell, had smell a fascination. This is, this is 89. What is this, Bo? Like, what is this? This is insane. Oh, that, I think that's chauffeur. I'm guessing that's a Kush or something? No, this is chauffeur from uh, Wow. Finance. This is like next level, bro. You grew this? Uh, yeah, it's all grown under. I mean, not me personally. Yeah, yeah. My, everyone I've taught and wow, great know. grower. Shout out to the team because this is this is some of the best flower that's uh, been on the show. Sick. We're at 105 episodes in. Fuck yeah. I would put this at top three. Sick. You know, that's well, I just you haven't even be, smoked it yet, so it might be on the top I, one beyond. You I've know? seen a lot. <laughs> there we go. And I like that, dude. I like that. I, I don't know, but you know what I mean. There's this a lot of good fresh. herb out there. Well, I, the, I think a big thing that's underestimated, like I want to roll some of the roll some smell uh, this, bro. Fresh weed. A lot of people haven't been best. able to access fresh weed. No, and fresh is the best. People are like, well, I like 120 day cure. Six months. Because you don't have fresh weed. That's why you like 120 day cure. <laughs> bro, it makes all the difference. We used to talk about psychoactive cannabinoids <laughs> and how when the plant is still somewhat fresh and it's let's say four to seven, eight, eight weeks from chop, it still has this psychoactive terpene high when it's the right strains. That's Those like highly volatile terpenes yeah. that are gone, like in cure. I mean, for us as a grower, once you hit day, that's so that's, that's AJ sour diesel, bro. From, from my friend, Dave, a uh, crazy composer on Instagram. Oh yeah, He's man. He's a fucking strain legend. Yeah. Anyway, he, he gave me that cut and it's uh. what should I roll up? I mean, it just depends on what you want to smoke, bro. Because we have so much. I know. Like, chronic you got here, strain bro. after strain. Uh, what What would you roll up though? What do you you know? If you're picking one to roll, I'm a sativa guy. I want. Bodhi's I mean, honestly, preference. what what I smoke right now? Um, I smoke Hazy Kush every day. I smoke the 89 NL every day. I smoke the AJ Sour Diesel every day. I smoke the Chauffeur every day. Those are my sh and sour best shit ever, which is basically OG Kush, right? Man, people. Oh, so here's some ancient aliens. This uh, GMO by Ancient OG that I did. So I made that strain just for me and Bodhi, me and uh, Plant More Seeds, Bodhi Seeds. Yeah. So he basically gave me his Ancient OG males, and we did a collab. And I I crossed it by the you know I have his he gave me his pine soul cut years ago, but I have this I have this GMO by the Ancient OG that I did for just me and him, and also the uh, G, uh, the Ancient OG by Pine Soul. So those those strains I just made actually for me and him, and this was the select pheno out of that. And so this one right here, is, the, man, you keep, you keep going back to that. Oh, one, bro. Man, <laughs> I'm telling you because I'm an old school. I'm an old school head. I really, you know, not as old school as some other. Obviously, it just it like, never do ends. Like, do you like like old school hash and shit? Like love the, it. Like, I, I like that. But I also I'm a big fan of like the old piff and the old sour. I know a lot of people are like well, oh, the old. I mean, we grew houses. Well, well, that, of that's it. why. That's why you keep going back oh. to this mystery, bro. Because it's like it's like piff piff, but like. <sighs> Hype piff. <laughs> Bro, are these available in California? Uh, no, they're not. I, I can tell because people would be clamoring. I haven't seen like people. I would have seen people posting this nonstop in Cali because like, man, I'm, I broke this nug open to stick in. I mean absolutely gorgeous dog bro Sick. like shout out to the team shout out to you for these strains too i haven't seen strains like this in a decade plus i mean stuff that reminds me of here's some um, old school that's 73 to 120 micron air dried um trim that's from trim though from dry trim so it's 73 to 120 micron air dried you know ice wash blah 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 from the mystery 
Um, or from what? Yeah, this is from Mystery and Hazy Combo. I can so, take. So I wasn't sure if you should want to throw some of that in okay, there. Okay, you okay. Know, like, I still got to make sure I can. Do, yeah, I like that you like to get on level three. <laughs> I got well, you. I mean, what I do is I throw this stuff in the grinder and I just like. <laughs> but you this notice, is all organic. Yeah, for sure. And bro, the way this breaks up, absolutely gorgeous, bro. Sick, just bro. by the way it breaks up. Nice. Great it's, job, man. Cure matters, you know, and like meaning like the dry matters because we ain't trying to cure shit, bro. I'm like. Full on, like, let's get that stuff dried, trimmed, and out the door, man. Like, I don't, like, it's the best. For me as a grower, and, you know, I've been growing since, I think, 97. This is my first run. And, like, from right around the time you can smoke it, when it's just dry enough to smoke it, you know, from that point. But not wet. No, from that point, for the next five to ten days, it's changing every day. You know, even by the hour, probably. And so you get this change and, and you get to target what you like, you know, maybe you don't like it. However many, cause like, no offense. If, if herbs two months from being cure, I'm uh, being cut. Mm-hmm. I, I'm over it. You know, I, I, I like it for about a month to five weeks. It doesn't smoke the same, no matter what anyone says. And you have to have had fresh weed or been either a grower or been close to a grower. And I'm talking a good grower, like, old weed is old weed and there's just so many benefits you lose when it starts to over dry and it de what is it decarboxylizes mm. and basically starts to change to cbn and all, all these things start to happen the terpenes are volatile like bodhi says like john says sorry it's so easy but like they, they so volatile actually means they will they will decompose and they will basically start to meld and eat each other up and all these things start to happen and it's just like there's nothing like fresh weed like no. it, it gets you excited especially sativas oh my god well i mean imagine like you know how we do we get a new strain it don't matter like what it looks like whatever if it's one of those strains you be hitting that thing every little jib of that stuff. You're gonna you're gonna mac it up to the end, you know. Like yeah. even this this AJ Sour Diesel. I just had one plant to flower, you know, um, just because that's what you we get a new strain. We test it. We get make sure it's clean, doesn't have hop. Double tested, so that takes six weeks. What's a keeper? Female. Because so many people, I think, pick something they think is a keeper or go into a chase saying we're gonna find a keeper. We spent 10,000 on seeds. Like we have to find a keeper or whatever the thing is. Right. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. And it's like, well, you don't know that. That's like saying every kid I'm going to have is going to be a, a sports player. It's going to be one of the top sports players of all time. Or here's how we like to do these hot rod. You know? I like that. Cause we, we have had a lot of people that come in John and they'll be like, here's our keeper. We hunted over a thousand oh. seeds of one cross. And I'm like, whoa, that's a lot of one cross. Just it's a lot to, of work, yo. Unless you've already done a small chase and known that it's starting to produce some fire, that's a lot to go in on on anything. And then to say, these are our five keepers from that. We're launching a brand behind it. It makes me nervous for them because I'm like, man, ooh, and it's all orange terps too or something where you're like, oh God, that's even <laughs> harder to sell, right? It's like you're hitting everything on the way down. If it's got orange terps, it's got to have burnt rubber or tire in it or some mm-hmm. kind of, <clears throat> we have this, <clears throat> we have this tangy land cut that we've been holding for a long time. It's like, Gray cut. I mean, it smells like oranges and, you know, burnt rubber or something. So that burnt rubber has a lot, you know, we like, we like the burp, burnt rubber, you know, baby poop, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like halitosis, you know, old man, like smoky coffee breath, you know, like it's so yeah. weird that you're like, how come all these in weed are nice? You we want the jock strap, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, this smells really weird. Yeah, you know, yeah. I like this, you know, it's true though. <clears throat> And that's, that's what makes them so unique. That's I mean, what makes cannabis so unique to anything else. Totally. Uh, we started to talk about psychedelics and I know you're passionate about that. I'd like to, while we like to, I'd like to talk a little bit more about that. It started yeah. with ayahuasca or did it started with, what was I the I mean, let's be real. You know, it's, it's, it, no, it started when I was younger, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, I grew up out, like I, I didn't grow up at the time of middle school and high school. I was out in this place called Ridgecrest, it's an hour north of Barstow, out in the Mojave Desert. Mm. It's vibey out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're looking for San Pedro and all kinds of Well, I mean, of stuff. out there, we're just like, we're eating anything to get high, you know? Like, you know, like first <laughs> first time I really got super high psychedelic that like, you know, eat, besides eating like orange sunshine acid was my first acid I ate from Nick Sands, and which was crazy as I was able to, um, you know, I kicked it with Nick Sands and, um, you know, I was invited to this party in about 20 years ago 
um, in the near the Bohemian Grove. <laughs> it was, cla- oh, it was wow. classic. But you know who was there? Nick Sands and his lady was there. Sasha and Ann Shulgin. You know, as the Shulgin fam. And I was their weed guy, you know? And so I was invited because I was the weed guy. And imagine, you know, like Sasha Shulgin sitting there telling us all about it, you know? The, the Western Division forensics head of the DEA was there, retired, but that was Shulgin's best friend. Trippy. Dude. And, the, you know, pick all and tick all those two books, you know? They, uh, their their two best friends they were there i, I don't know if it was I, I i always want to say george and wilma i don't know their names actually i think it was that but it was basically sasha and Ann, sasha, sasha and ann's best friends and that they were the ones that discovered all the you know mdma 2cb and they were the ones because you know sasha was talking about it and he's like what what i do is i think i'd be on to a molecule and then i'd start to eat it and if i'd get high before i'd get sick i knew it was a direction to go if I got sick before I got high, it was bad. I was like, motherfucker tested every, all this shit himself. You know, what a legend. I mean, obviously he is the legend of legends, but so anyway, to be at a party with these guys, you know, and Nick Sands, you know, and Nick Sands, it was so funny. You know, he's talking about alchemy and, you know, like basically he had this thing synergy, you know, mm-hmm. you talk about and him and his lady, they do a certain amount of all these different molecules or plants and, They'd get really high, but not too high. And they'd, you know, have their experience together or through the weekend. And, you know, and, and I was like, that's what's up, you know, because, you know, Nick Sands, he was like 65. His woman, his, his partner that he was there where she was like 40 something. And I was like, this dude's killing it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and he was. He's built a life around his passions. And he was killing it. And he was talking about when he was doing Orange Sunshine, when he was, you know, making the Orange Sunshine, you know? Mm-hmm. He said he was making 100 grams of raw a day. 100 grams of raw, I think it's a million hits. I'm not really sure. Is it a million or? Anyway, a day. And he's all, he told us this one time, he's all, I got so high, you know, because, you know, you get kind of high. You know, he was so cool. This guy was so cute, man. He was like belly, you know, he said, I had a shirt, I love sunshine, you know? He was such an OG dude, had the biggest earlobes, you know? He was so cool, man. And so he's telling this story, you know, he's all like, one time, you know, I thought we were getting raided. He said, so I put everything in the safe van. The whole lab went into the van, everything, you know, we're breaking it all down and we get in the car and we're going to the safe house, you know, and we're like, oh, 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 you know, they're chasing us there, you know, <laughs> and we get there and we unload and nobody's chasing us. Yep. He's all, that happened more than once. He said, but you wouldn't know until you do all that, that you get away. It's that. It's the breakdown of the grow house old days. Oh my goodness. Hurry up. There, there's a flyover. The, the, and oh you turn all goodness. the lights and, you, and you're like, you don't know. You just, Dude. yeah. But, but you're around these people and they're so passionate about psychedelics and how uh, ego loss happens, how you start to really find, uh, I guess, your way through life. Or how would you put it? Well, for me personally, it was like, you know, getting back into those like minor first psychedelics that we'd try, you know, like for me personally, we tried everything. W- you know, we'd eat this whole box of Marazine. It was a motion sickness pill. You know, you eat all 14 pills. You, you hallucinate more than any other drug I've ever had in my life. The only time I've ever had true hallucinations was off of that. Wow. You know, like, of course, like Robitussin, you know, we'd like, Oh, you drink one bottle. I'll drink. T- I'm the guy that drinks two, you know, oh, God. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, wake up, wake up, well, you know, watching, they're watching naked lunch, this movie, the naked lunch, I'm listening to Mr. Bungle. And I'm like, think I didn't have no arms and legs, you know, so, you yeah. have to be very comfortable in your own skin though, to be able to do that because you start to, you could, you, you go internal and external with a lot of that stuff. So oh, you get, bu- you get bugged, you know? So like, you know, going to ayahuasca and these things like so it's been a journey you know this is when i was 18 and then when i met the shulgans that that was already after i had met my first teacher in peru you know i what, read about that um i read him i read about his name uh you had Sayer tupac yeah Sayer tupac Sayer. okay and Sayer tupac was one of the last incan kings too so he's descendant family you know and he's just the He's the OG of OGs, you know? He's like the real Don Juan, man. Like the real one, you know? Like, you know, like Kelly Slater, all of that. That's his, that's their guy is this dude, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, Greg Long, when he died out of Cortez Banks on that, he, you know, took a huge wave out there, ended up drowning, died. 
the way he was able to surf big waves again is he went and saw my teacher, you know? Oh. And so like, <clears throat> yeah. you know, so my teacher's that guy, you know? Yeah. Um, works with those type of people, crazy people like me. It so happens that I came in contact with him at this thing, you know? And well, what's crazy is I went down there because, um, you know, the psychic lady said I'd meet my first teacher in Peru, you know? Because these, in Eugene, what happened was all these um, elderly female, you know, kind of elders. Yo, what up? It's Blackleaf. I'm here at Grow Generation. And guess what? Drip Hydro storm in the market. All the best growers I know are switching to it. And guess what? There's a reason. Because it's preserving terps. I keep hearing that. Preserving terps. And that's why we're here with Sunshine. Facility advisor, facility manager. Overall, the man with Drip Hydro. Listen to why it's different, man. What's going on, guys? Sunny here with Drip Hydro. Thing is, at the end of the day, we just wanted to make a simple, clean, cost-effective nutrient line that nobody has really seen on the market right now. Nobody uses really our chelation formulas, uh, the micronutrients that we have pulled to make this line is really just what makes it overall bringing that consistency and quality back to what we want to see in growing herb again and overall at the end of the day it's still really light on your wallet it's a five-part nutrient line and again if you're not staying sterile or you have a big facility and you don't want to run rock wool and you want to run a mix of cocoa with an enzyme or something you don't even have to run flow with it so at the end of the day it's just saving you money on your wallet while bringing the consistency and the quality of terps back we wanted to bring the terps back and bring the soul back to growing versatility cost effective and quality i mean what else can you ask for drip hydro first smoke of the day black leaf approved peace you know i was i was pretty rowdy when i was younger you know i was i'm half korean half white so got bullied a lot so i started fighting a lot and then i started like whooping bullies asses because like i didn't like bullies and then any one time a bully tried to be a bully i was like game on you know I come to Eugene and it wasn't so much like that, but people were really loud and talky and like, you know, but from other places, when you act like that, you fight, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was, I came with that energy to Eugene and everyone's like, Hey bro, you got a, you got something special, but like, but it happened kind of subtly. It didn't happen. So like when I look back, it looked like it was all intended. It's good though. You had the fire inside of you and it was like, you had to tame it. They were trying to like, you know, if you want to be around here, grow this good weed live this good life for the land of milk and honey like eugene offers you can't be beating people's asses bro <laughs> you can't be fighting people yeah that's done you know are you already surfing at this point at all or no 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 actually okay. i learned to surf because of my because of armando because of cider tubog you know because he's like man if you don't surf then what kind of athlete are you you know wow i'm like oh well, that's cold <laughs> Dude, one of the one of the coolest things i that he said that i had read that you wrote was basically you've already mastered a relation with a wisdom plant now master your intention what do you want to be some long-haired hippie yogi in a cave some wannabe shaman or some bs go eat cactus a thousand times drink aya until you don't need it study practice have an aware child train them well do something special with your life i thought that was very cool and very enlightened yeah man and um Oh yeah, it almost it makes me kind of teary. You know, just thinking about it, but like it's like because it's happening, you know. Yeah. You know, I have a son. You know, he's eleven. He's born on the day they recognize the Buddha's birthday. You know, he's very you know cool kid. You know, and now as he's growing, you know, I'm a strict parent. You know, mm -hmm. I'm I'm actually a single parent too. You know, his his mother has issues. You know, substance abuse, whatever. So I've been full custody. You know, full full go since he was three. You know, and so that running a business, doing the whole thing traveling, going to India, doing all these things and trying to show him like the reality of reality that really this is samsara, man. This isn't like, we're not in heaven, we're in hell here, you know? Like even in Christian reality, you know, like Michael and God, they cast Lucifer to the earth, not to hell, <laughs> earth with a third of his angels, you know? I'm, I'm not a Christian, but I understand the, the similarity in all the teachings, you know? Gotcha. There's a common base understanding of what, all these religions offer, you know, which is love, which is equanimity, you know, compassion, forbearance, forgiveness, these things like yep. that really the plant will show you more than anything. Even like, you know, I'm a Buddhist, but like, you know, like with, with Jesus saying, oh, instead of focusing on the splinter in your brother's eye, examine the plank in your own. Like, what, what did we not hear that verse? You know, if someone strikes you the right cheek, turn to him the other, like, um, Where'd the war part come from, you know? I'm, I'm fucking lost here, you know, with, because what this dude was teaching was nothing like that. 
And so like, you know, and then you get into these adepts and Buddhism or Hinduism or whatever. What are they doing? They're abstaining in lots of ways. And whether it be even from action, but ultimately abstaining from harming. And that's the common base of all these things. Themselves or someone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so like, once we start to see all these relationships between it all and the dependent occurrency of it all, meaning the cause and effect and the all this causation and interconnectivity, you know, for me, I don't like see much separation. And even, you know, when you look, where was Jesus at prior to him coming back? He was up in Northern India, you know, when, and then he starts bringing all this compassion talk and everything, like almost looked like he's teaching Buddhism, you know? Mm -hmm. Like really, and especially when you start to isolate what's going on. Ah, so it's, there's a universal thing. Energy being it, reincarnated. Religion is this weird human thing, man. Mm -hmm. Love is an action that's truth. It, it's, it's not some human, it's like universal, you know? And once we, once we start like eliminating all these labels and boxes and barriers and limitations that we put upon everything, we can start realizing that we're all the same. Yeah. And then we all have the same thing inside. Like, like when we talk about this and you get the chills and your eyes get all wet and shit and you get that feeling and, you know, that only comes from talking about this kind of stuff. It don't come from being a selfish fool, you know, like even like, you know, I, there's this special wave up in uh, Oregon, you know, and I was surfing it a few years back and I broke my back a couple of years ago, really bad climbing. My climbing partner dropped me. I decked and hit a slab of granite about, Ooh. you know, broke my back really bad. and you know, crushed four spinous process to my vertebra and end up walking out of there. It happened right in front of my son. So I just did the Wolverine thing, you know? Wow. Not bro. really, but like really, you know? Yeah. And what was crazy is when I went up to get the, the, cause I, you know, you don't want to leave any junk on the wall. Cause you, if you can't climb something, you gotta, you have to leave something to get to your highest point, you know? Right. So anyway, I didn't want to leave my two pieces of gear underneath the, my last one. So I, I'm like, put me back on. I'm going to get at those pieces, you know? I literally fucking broke a slab of granite that was two feet um, wide by about five feet and about a foot thick. I would have been like, hey, bro, we're going to write a note and just stick it to the wall. You'll be OK. <laughs> well, dude, I fucking you broke went there. Your back, I, I, went, I went there six months later <laughs> with my kid and fucking got a chunk of that rock. We got it at the house, you know, because I was like, we got this, brother. You know, like, yeah. we'll show you what's up, you know. But anyway, so like when I, after I got up and, you know, the whole thing, I, when I climbed back up to get the pieces, you know. When I reached up to get, I remember it was a, a blue Metolius and a blue alien, you know, these two cams, you know, when I reached up, it was just like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, fuck, I broke my back. I think that's what's going on, you know? And so I'm like, lower me. You know, I got the pieces out, lower me, took all my shit off, draw my stuff and walked out, you know? And then, um, and I went to the hospital, you know, broken back, fucking halo, you know, multiple broken ribs, spinous process, T1, 2, 3, and 4 crushed, obliterated, T1 compressed buckle fracture you know have you always had a pain tolerance like that where you're like you were able because most people yeah. that would have crushed them they would have, they would have had to been carried out of there yeah i mean like even my body like i used to sound like i got like you know seven percent body fat but yeah. I, I'm, I weigh 180 for my size i look like i should weigh 160 so my my bone density is kind of high my dad has that same thing so i'm I, you know the doctor even said he's all dude the fact that you've been living a good life your whole life because you know when you look at the the model of the a vertebra the spinal cord, the spinous transverse and spinous process. Yeah, if your spinous transverse goes like this, the spinal cord's inside here. Spinous process is your spine bone that's here. So those were obliterated on four of them. And then it pushed this so much that it buckle fractured the internal side of my T1 vertebra, you know? And so like, you're like, wow. You know, I remember coming up, you know, and like seeing my kid just fucking, oh my God, my, my dad. He like thought I fucking died, you know, like straight up, you know, cause he was freaking the fuck out, you know? And I was really interesting cause I was like, you know, I felt like I had the wind knocked out of me, but I could breathe. <laughs> so I was like, something's weird. You like walk in to see the doctor and he's like, no, I told him you should be on a plank. I told him, you know, and I was like, I went in there and I was like, I broke my back. I'm pretty sure this is what's up. They're like, oh, okay, whatever. I'm like, I'm fucking serious, you know? So they're, it was, yeah, it they're was, like, it, was, right, it was in Tahoe, you know? Yeah. Um, Cause it was a lover's leap, you know? And, uh, you know, I went in there and they fucking instantly put me in, did the whole thing. Oh yeah, dude, they're, you know, you're fucked. You know what I mean? They, and then, you know, of course the doctors, when they're coming, they're like, it's a really weird sense. Cause they're like, man, you're going to, you might be done for your, you know, your 
whole life's going to change now, this whole trip, you know, this whole thing's going on because you just destroyed yourself, basically, the whole thing, you know. <laughs> it was so funny. My buddy Logan, I was talking about earlier, one of my apprentices, the Santa Cruz, Loke surfer, you know. <laughs> we, you know, because we always make fun of Mike Tyson when he's all like, I, I broke, what, what happened, Mike? I broke my back. Oh, you broke your back? Yeah, spinal, you know. <laughs> so I sent him a plan. selfie of me in the fucking halo, you know. I was like, <laughs> I broke my back spinal you know <laughs> he's like mother, <laughs> motherfucker you know like because you know we're like i'm like his we're like brothers you know yeah and i'm a mentor and like he's like my little brother you know like it's a way to be though have a sense of humor <laughs> about it and be like nah so what's the recovery like on that um like, it was pretty tough you know yeah. like it was hard um but really i it wasn't that bad like i snowboarded all that winter actually what? i broke my back august 19th 19th i think it was or 20 somewhere around there snowboarding all winter and what was crazy five to six months later four months later yeah i was snowboarding in december oh yeah so shit, like dude and i wow. had i had knee surgery also that that um october from the same injury or different? no it was different surfing okay. injury and stuff but i got knees i'm like oh, i'm fucked i might as well get it you know because i got all my deductibles covered and stuff mm -hmm. so i got um knee surgery too and then i was snowboarding in december and then we had one of, you know, one of these all time seasons, you know, it was like, I think it was three years ago. Was it or whatever? You're like there's fresh pow and it Dude, keeps we got, cutting. we got, we got <laughs> mammoth me and my buddy, my actually what's funny is my brother, Jose, who is side Tupac's son, you know, we're like best friends. He's the one that does a lot of my video stuff. Yeah. But even when we met, he's all, you and my oldest son are going to be brothers. You know, he could tell from that moment, you know, and it was true, you know, and, um, and we're brothers, you know, like really. So anyway, we're up at mammoth, you know, and like fucking god it's so good so it was really interesting to be able to and i really you know to be able to do that and recover that and then you know it all comes back to this plant really and back to my teacher saying you know what what you said there and recited there it was like i come down there to be a shaman you know because i just like you know this is 2002 three three i think or something around there um, so 2002, 2003, you know, I got my hands on some DMT, smoked whole gram to my head. And I'm like, oh yeah, that there's no separation between me and living beings. Period. We're the same energy, you know, cause I was, I had this plant on the table, you know, and I remember I was like, you know, gram deep in DMT, you know, vibes. So I was realizing that the light energy of the plant and the light energy, my, me was exactly the same, you know? There's no difference. I could not see any difference. But the pot, the soil, everything was had a different energy. It wasn't live, you know. Mm. And then, but the colors and everything's all, you know. I mean, just like first time I had ayahuasca, you know, this shaman singing, you know, and I'm seeing the ikaros come out in like algebraic equations, you know, of the vibration frequency of the, you know, computation of the, you know, the wave. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, there's math is how we describe shit everything you know and so that kind of seeing these interlaced interconnections of everything in a way that's it was you know my own experience mm -hmm. people have their own experiences but that showed me that there's no separation you know yeah pat gods had just done an ayahuasca ceremony and he, it seemed like he gained a pretty good uh perspective through it as well well and that gets to the death thing you know because for me like i always wanted to push myself to death like who are you there? You know, cause like I've only seen who I really am when I think I'm dying. You know, my regret isn't never been as strong as then when you thought you're fucking dying, you know, like one time I ate too much acid and like, you know, was, I was just fucked up, you know, and like, but passed out into that too much acid vibe, you know? Um, and the things that I wished I would have done when I was dying, literally thinking I was dying, you know, I wish I would have hugged my dog. I wish I would have not been a prick to my parents so much. And I wish I wouldn't have like talked the way I talked to some people, you know, and like, and those things were the things that were like, that I died with at that moment, you know? And then I woke up and I was a fucking alive, you know? Yeah. And so you got to carry those lessons forward. Then. You only yeah. get that experience. And with ayahuasca, if you take it to that level, like, you know, study, Armando's name, you know, Sade Tupac, he, he killed me on purpose, you know, because I'm like, you know, he knew who I was there or who I was to his family and to him, you know, out of his 
multi thousands of people that have been through all of his thing and his classes and the thousands of people they've worked with, you know, cause like he's the, he's Don Juan of Peru, bro. Like, you know, you go to Cusco, you, you, you find that guy, you know, he's the yeah. guy of Peru, you know? Yeah, yeah. And he's a freak, you know, Kung Fu black belt, left everything, went to India for three years, living there, painted all the tankas, studied, took all the texts back home, you know? And so it's, he was basically combining, you know, Andy and plant wisdoms, Buddhism and quantum physics. It's like a life guru. You know, so he's yeah. like, and, and he's a badass. So like some weird, gnarly, evil deed demon like me, like can have respect for someone like that, you know, cause we're like that, you know, like, you know, some, some males are weird, you know, what makes people respect is how strong your jaw is, you know, like <laughs> yeah. how many rocks can you take on the chin? You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's life. That's life. <laughs> you know, you know, and so how does it go from ayahuasca to cactus well it's it was it didn't go from it was oh. he is really the cactus guy and so it's funny you know me being the arrogant you know guy i am still fucking sadly i'm doing my best to work on that shit but how i for sure was when i was younger you know because i was like you know full of everything you know and i hadn't been killed a bunch of times yet you know i hadn't been put to the death a bunch of times yet you know strip layers so of course i call alan shoemaker the guy that puts on this event and down in you know the first amazonian shamanic conference that i got invited to by maps because of giuliani hay was at this party i was talking about with nick sands and everything and she's like you need to go to this thing you know da, 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 you know whatever so anyway it all kind of happened like that i think it was that's the way it went i can't really remember and things you get down, mixed, so i get you, down there you know but yeah. i call alan i'm like hey man don't put me with all the other guys. You know, I'm like special, you know, <laughs> I'm from Eugene and I'm like the best weed grower here. Yeah, they say, yeah. you know, that's what everyone says. I don't say it, but they say, yeah, it, I know? want the extra dose. I want the, I want to be in there. So <laughs> anyway, he puts me in with all the presenters. Oh, wow. So I'm in with like Dennis McKenna, Eduardo Luna, oh. fucking my teacher. And you know, like Armando's room was right across from mine. And we were going to do ayahuasca for the first time, you know, like I was, I was, so I'm like, I want to do it with a woman shaman, you know? So we go to Norma Panduro, you know, she's the most famous ayahuasca female, you know, we go there and me and Armando start talking because we like, we're going to catch the bus to the, to the, you know, to the, to this lady, um, from the conference, from the presenter's hotel that I was just so lucky was that, you know, yeah. and staying in. Um, and, and we missed the boat bus. I'm like, fuck, you know, how much I like. But then there's Armando, you know, I was like, oh, bro, you're the San Pedro shaman, you know? He's all, I ain't no stinking shaman, bro. I was like, oh, you're cool. <laughs> <laughs> so we start vibing, talking, whatever, you know? He's there with his wife and daughter, you know? And, and you know, he's a classic, like, guy, you know? Like, he's the, he was Don Juan, you know? But little. I didn't realize, so different shamans or not shamans, but people specialize in different types of journeys. Well, yeah, he's really a cactus guy, but he's not a, he's a everything guy. Cause like we have this myth, it's called the myth of Inkari, you know? And this is what, um, one of the things that, you know, he told me one of the first talks, you know, might've been even this first talk. I don't really remember, honestly. Cause really what happened was we get, we, we get, we get, we miss this thing. We go to this, go to this thing together. He, you know, cause he's the Peruvian low. So it's, he gets there, no problem. So I'm just with him now, you know, <laughs> tells me the story, all this whole thing. And I was like, Cause you know, like this, I just went to a psychic lady, one of these mentors, they told me I'm going to find my first teacher in Peru, you know, cause like it's this long story. This one goes really long back to when I was a kid, you know? Um, cause it's, I went to this psychic lady and I'm like, tell me something that like, I don't, I don't believe you, you know, but you tell me something that's like, that only I'll know, you know, I was like, what's your trip? You know, like, what are you into? She's like, I don't, I don't even want to do this, but I have this gift, you know? So if you come get to me, then I'll, I'll do this, but I, I don't, this isn't like, I don't like this actually. Ooh, she's really? like, she doesn't even, yeah, you know, she does her calling. She does massage. You know, I said, well, what's your belief? So I believe in Christ consciousness and this stuff. So I said, okay, cool. I, I can get, I can vibe with that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so she's like, all right, she gets in her trance, you know, and she starts laughing, you know? And I was like, she's like, oh, she's like, oh, they didn't mean to scare you. I said, oh, what? tell me, you know? Oh, she's like, I'm with your, you know, I would say they're your spirit guides, but it's different. She's like, they were coming to check on you, you know? And, um, 
they didn't mean to scare you, you know, but they were sad on your rebirth, you know, because they said you were going to face a lot more difficulties, you know. I said, interesting. And they said, they, she said they would come and see you, you know, but you got really scared, you know. And so when I was three, four years old, these, I'd see these beings come like, and it was really weird because I always thought they were like jesters, you know, because they had this weird little shoe and they were always like this and they had a different kind of hat on, you know. But then, you know, years later when I, you know, I'm, we're closely related to His Holiness of Dalai Lama's monastery and everything. When I see this whole Galupa lineage, everything, that's the hat. That's a shoe. But for the longest time, I didn't realize that. But anyway, so at this time, they'd come check on me. And I'd get, I got so fucking scared, I started sleeping with my head under my cover so I was in fucking junior high, bro. Yeah, because you, you didn't wrap her head around that they're no, guys. I was just like, fuck it. You know, like, <laughs> uh, anyway, so she recanted that whole trip, you know? And I was wow. like, ah. And I said, all right, let's go, you know? Wow. Show me what. And she said some other things that only she could have known that I know, you know? And so I was down, you know? And she said, oh, you know, you need to go to Peru. You'll meet your first teacher there, you know? So anyway, this trip was like after that, I go to Peru. This guy drops his bomb of a, you know, save the world fucking warrior vibe, you know, like trip on me. And I'm like, I walk away and I was like, Dude, that was the fucking, that was what I came here for. I saw I walked right back up to him. I was like, hey, man, that was the conversation I was actually coming down here for. And he's all, for sure it was, bro. We've been waiting for you, you know? Welcome to the family, you know? And so he said, after we leave this here, we'll go up to the Sacred Valley. I'll run through, you through all the initiations of my family and everything. And so I was with his son. Um, and he has, you know, my uh, brother Jose's little brother too, Arma, Arma, Armando. It's Armandito because he's like little Armando. But anyhow. So we went up there, run through all the, all the initiations, you know, like initiations, like smoking, you know, like salvia, five time, 10 time, five time, like stacked extract, Ooh. but two pipes full after you sneak in to the ruins of Oyante Tambo, drink cactus off the puma head, do like hours of ceremony. Then you go into this sacrificial rock they have. That's like a human body's, you know, cut out of. And you get in that mold, dude, and you smoke the salvia until you're dead, you know? And you, like, smoke the salvia, like, big hit, exhale, big hit. And he's holding the pipe, you know? And you're just like... <laughs> until you're fucking... He lays you back down in that mold of that rock, of the sacrificial rock of Uyante Tambo ruins, which if you go there, it's the centerpiece of the whole giant ruins, you know? And that's where you catch the... Catch the um, train to go to Aguas Calientes or Machu Picchu, you know? So and anyway, this is like a psychedelic gauntlet. Yeah. So basically oh, it's like, yeah. let, let, let me kill you. <clears throat> yeah. So you can Rebirth. be yourself again, bro. Oh. So it's like, you know, it's like this. We all have this potential of enlightenment, say like the seed of the Buddha or the, they call it primordial Buddha, Buddha seed, you know? Mm -hmm. it, but it's like the analogy would be like, if you have a mirror, you know, it always has the, potential for reflecting but if it's covered in murk and silt and mud it don't reflect jack shit so like we always have this potential for enlightenment but we're just like covered in this filth of karma and societal imputations and our own past actions because you know if we, all we have to do is analyze our living life to know that we fucked it all up already because mm. <laughs> like Damn. Because, I mean, when I look back at my life, I've been a really do my best to be a good person. And I'm sure I've been fucking wicked, evil fucker, you know, because I used to fight a lot. And I used to I have this arrogance and aggression that I've been trying to deal with because I want to be a part of something and be connected. And that's where my teacher, you know, he told me, he's all, hey, bro, we all just want to be a part of something, man. He's all, that's why when we sing the Ikaros, you know, everyone has the shaker, you know, everyone's doing it. Everyone's singing, anaididi, anaididi. You know, you, everyone's doing the thing because you're basically learning the tools to be a shaman for yourself. So when you fucking die, you can die good, you know, whatever that may be, you know, mm -hmm. it's not about like for me, I have a different tech now than because I'm not a shaman. I learned all the songs, I learned all the tech, I can give plants in all these different ways, but that's not my thing. And like he said, he's all, what are you going to be, some long haired hippie shaman, bro? It's like you already mastered a relationship with a wisdom plant. Now master your intention. So now this has been like 20 some years of, 
you know, for the first part, I ate cactus every day for um, three years or so while I was doing preliminary Buddhist practices of um, like the nundro, they call it, like prostrations, offering refuge, these different things. And you do 100,000 plus of these. And, you know, and, and while I was doing all my preliminary study, meditation, whatever, three, five, seven hours a day for, you know, for years and years and studying and studying why. Because otherwise, this doesn't mean jack shit. Basically, you know, like I've, and he's like, go back to your country, bro. Help your people there, man. He's like, we got it here. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. <laughs> Not really, That's but like, good. But he's like, go help your people there. Yeah. Climb every mountain there. So like. The seed's been planted. So we started doing that, you know, from like Shasta, you know, all the way up to St. Helens. We've summited pretty much every one minus a few all doing mantras to sit on the very summit to like really do the thing. Cause we think that mattered, you know, and basically he's saying, he's like, Hey man, what we do just to show in case the aliens are watching bro or something, you use that pyramid. That's a, you know, a mathematic convergence point. You use all that energy and you climbing your ass to the top, doing your mantras, doing your intention. You sit to the top and you do the practice there and you like do the thing, bro, just to do the thing. And so you do that, you know, and, and that's just like one phase of it with all this other thing that was happening, you know? So really, you know, back to where I was getting at with the myth of Inkari, you know, and this is what he said. He's like, imagine, man, that we fucked our planet up wherever we were, say, you know, outside Cirrus, you know, when we're all over there. Um, who knows what, but that's like one of the myths, right, that we all or that certain peoples that are here come from outside the, you know, Cirrus, you know, there's like constant, I mean, whatever. I don't really know. Interesting. But there's all these different ideas of mm -hmm. where we were prior, you know? Okay. So, but he said, imagine, man, like how we're all trying to leave here now because we fucked this place up, you know? We already fucked that place up. Imagine we all converge, say, you know, on a comet or whatever spaceship we come. We hit this place, you know, with that destroy all violent or all potential risk, bring all the fungi, all the bio life, you know, cause you look what, what happened after the dinosaurs, huge fungus, you know, just basically composted the whole earth, you know, and then what happened then mammals start, you know? So anyway, these things, you know, if we came here with all the gear, you know, the spore, the seed, the whatever hit this place, Send Pangea into flow. Send this, ignite this thing, just like a sperm hitting an egg, creating an, you know, it's all the same, right? We get it. Like life is com life. Comet hitting the yes. planetary thing, you know, like sperm hitting the egg. Like they look almost identical, you know? And it's the same with plants and people. And it's all the same. And that's what, mm -hmm. what really what it comes down to. And so like he said, imagine, bro, we do this thing. You know, we put the cannabis everywhere, right? Asia, Africa, whatever. We have Iboga in Africa. We have the mushrooms all over Africa. In, you know, the South America, we have the San Pedro. We have the peyote in Central America. We have, you know, Amanita muscaria everywhere, you know. In, we have the, you know, Chakruna and the Banisteriopsis copy, the two ingredients for ayahuasca. We have all these things. The acacia, all the, everywhere, you know, all over. And he said, so. We take all these plants to unlock our own gates, to be the key to unlock our own potential, you know? First, starting with the gateway drug of cannabis, gateway, you know, meaning like we all get it when we are high on mushrooms and we smoke herb. We're more high on mushrooms now, you know? It's like we get yeah. to, it accentuates. Exactly. It opens the gate. And I also think it's like on many levels that, right? It's like gateway drug too, because once you've tried it, you realize like, Oh, this is a, a p amazing medicine. Gateway to awareness. Your, exactly. Not in a negative light. No. Yes. They, they just try to abuse it all. You know right? what I mean? Yeah. Just say no. You know, just say no to your bullshit. You know? Where like, do you what? think, though, like the cannabis industry? Is it because of the competitiveness that all this hate comes about? Or is it because of social media? Because like the negative, it's like the small circles we used to have. The only time it got negative was over money when someone fucks someone over, really. But like when you say humbleness, we used to all, because there was only a couple strains around small crews, most of the guys would grow probably one or two of the same strains. So when you show up to the sesh, 
and everyone has a jar of the same weed and they grew it their way. Very humbling experience for a lot yeah. of people when they're always the one where they're like, I like his weed better. Yeah. And it's not what you've grown. But it's like nowadays. Well, you know, when, 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 when gotten, you're the only one that's like, when your jars come out, no, no other jars come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, with the industry, you know, like, it's just, it's just society. It's humanity. It's, it's what, like, look at what's happening in the world right now. What's important to people. It's not, it's, it's like, it's division. It's all They're relative. selling division, bro. Like, yeah. every which way, you know? Every single area, they're selling division. Why? Because it makes us all weak mm. as a whole. If, you know, if they're selling community, if they're selling, you know, like the, even this whole like political thing, the whole thing that we just all experienced this whole last few years from whatever to whatever to whatever. I don't even want to say the words because yeah. they're so stupid, some of them, and because they're so divisive, mm -hmm. you know, like it, it's just sad because like, you know, for myself, I'm, I'm half Korean, half white, so I haven't really felt a part of anything. And, you know, I, all my upbringing, I for sure wasn't like the white kid, you know, I wasn't accepted by that. And I for sure, you know, with Asians, a little different, you know, but like, you're not that either, you know? And so you're in a unique thing of what now we've realized is what most of us are. We're all hybrids, bro. Yeah. We're all hybrids, you know, <laughs> we're all hybrids. And people want to get, are people you? want to get all yeah, like yeah. tight on what they're this, what, but that's so old, you know? Mm -hmm. That's like old days, you know? Why did we have to do it like that? Well, it's because otherwise you don't survive, you know? If you didn't stay in your group and defend against other groups, your group goes away. And that's where these things kind of, I think, come from. And so there's these primal aspects that are still really close to us, mm -hmm. but we're all sophisticated, you know? Which is really like, what's the most sophisticated, you know? People don't understand that really the most sophisticated is a compassionate, loving mind, period. That's the most sophisticated because the self that wants to take gratification for everything isn't there. In altruism, there isn't, you know, true altruism, you know, because like you give the medicine to heal, you do these things. Those aren't, you don't, you can see it in your own self. You don't care about what you get out of it. You don't care about all you want is for them to be better. And then when they come back and say, hey, you know, my tumors that were the size of like ping pong balls and racquetballs in my brain that my doctor said I was going to die in six weeks. Now here we are five weeks later. She goes in. MRI. All this was left is the halos of the tumors, bro. You know, when when the ladies come and you watch her, you know, like watch her daughter graduate college and you watch her. You know, and so when you have lots of these types of experiences, you know, that's like, I think all this, what's happening with the hate in the industry, they don't have those experiences enough. Perspective. They don't, they don't, they don't help people, bro. They're selfish. They're worried about the shine. They're worried about the flash. They're worried about the thingy and the thingy and the thingy. And you see it like, cause you know, it's cool to go to Vegas. You get to hang out with all types of people, do the whole Vegas thing. Meaning cause like weeds popping in Vegas, but yeah, what the, the people care about it's totally different than if you go up to NorCal, you go up to Oregon you, and you see what they're caring about. Like we got into this ultimately to heal ourselves, because, you know, getting high, it's, it's, it's not about being stoned. It's about being high. It's about being aware. It's about recognizing the samenesses in each other, not the differences, you know, and that's what this is all about. And that's what this plant's doing in my opinion, in its own way, you know? So that's why some of us feel like we really got to take a stand and at least show that there's people like this doing this thing. And that's kind of what my teacher first said years ago. He's like, bro, if the aliens are watching, just know we can make sure that at least they know that someone's sending the, the rainbow out, bro. <laughs> the, the, the rainbow of love, you know? Not, not any other thing. It's like really all-inclusiveness because it's all light. So then if we're all light, you break down light, it's, you know, in that thing. And so, and when you break down energy, it gets to lie, it, you know, at a certain point, all this figure dissolves and what's left, you know? How do you, because one of the toughest things in cannabis is having this life 
that we're talking about. And then also raising a child right in this business, because this business is treacherous. It's a lot of, like you say, all those things we've been talking about. How do you pass that knowledge onto a, a child? Um, just honestly and real and, 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 and sadly, like my son's probably seen a lot more than, um, a lot more than he should have already. You know, he's, he's been around a lot of adult scenarios and has that experience. He's been to India multiple times. He's, you know, like been, you know, on stage at two week long teachings with his holiness of Dalai Lama that are like 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day seated teaching there. He's been through those things, you know, he's experienced and he's, so he's experienced in all types of ways. He watches his dad deck from 30 feet crushing granite, you know, like he's has these kind of things that, um, you know, cause I'm, I'm trying to train a warrior, you know, mm -hmm. cause they're, we're, we're getting less, you know, the people that will commit and devote their life to altruism and bodhicitta and helping others really, you know, like they're few now. Fewer, you know, not as few as you think, really, because all you got to do is talk about this kind of stuff with people. And if they're good hearted people, they're going to be like, I'm fucking down, bro. Mm -hmm. Where do I sign up? You know, and that's, you know, we're, we're all that. And what I've seen in my own self through all these high level psychedelics and cactus, LSD, mushrooms, ayahuasca, everything is that like, I have the potential for it all, actually. The most evil. And the most noble and kind and loving and aware and, you know, I have that inside. Because when I was younger and I'd see people's face morph in front of me, you know, because I, you know, you're on like however many hits of acid and shit's going weird and you're around and, you know, people are morphing to you. Like, it looks like the, you know, that, that, what, uh, that movie, The Devil's Advocate with Keanu Reeves, oh, you know, God, yeah, yeah. It, it was, it's like that, you know, and what I realized is I thought it was all them. And it wasn't, it was me. And when all that stuff I started to deal with, now I, get, I can get really high and I don't have those things happen. I don't see people's change that way. I see different things in them. You know, I see the reflection's different now. The mirror-like wisdom that's coming from my experience is changing. So that means, oh, I must not be such an asshole anymore in my heart and my mind. And so the goal is to just become the best version of you you can be, the I mean, most enlightened version, the most perspective, the most knowledgeable, the most determined, the mo uh, you know, every checkbox that's important to you as a person or, yeah. or should be. I mean, and when you realize if you're a good person, all those things are important to all good people. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's just one, it's how we get there is a whole different trip. What it took me, I had to die a bunch of times. I was wicked, man. I wanted to be a green beret, you know? And what's funny is my, my bro that I lived with, he actually ended up going green beret, retired. Now he's, you know, goes overseas and trains, you know, like people to do that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? He's, he's the fucking man's man. Like. 20 plus year green beret, bro. Wow. You know, yeah, I had read that you were really adamant about going into the military early. And on. so like, I wanted to do that, you know, and cause I wanted to, I really wanted to be the best killer on earth, you know, cause I wanted to save the day, man. No one, no people will accept me if I like, if I do that. Got you. Okay. If I, if I give up my soul and my like everything for the sake of all the humans, maybe they'll like me then, you know, but that's all introspective stuff that you have to learn after. Why am I wanting this? Well, I mean, what Why happened for this? me, you know, I like, yeah. I, I wanted to go SF, wanted to go Delta. After I retired, I want to be a mercenary killer. Like, you know, with my, with my, with my, like, f like, you know, necklace of fingers, you know, <laughs> oh, God, you know, I like one of the things my grandpa used to say to me growing up was you'd be a good soldier boy. Or I used to hear that, or you'd be a good soldier, son. I used to hear that. <laughs> I, and I remember thinking that, you know, yeah. And so I, like what I, happened for me is I, I was in Georgia. I was out there working at this place called the Crab Shack and Tybee Island, you know, and I was like in my most worst part of my life for sure. Ended up getting this 10 strip of LSD, you know, it was a 30 strip, but guys gave it to me first as a 10 strip. I was like, oh, weird. It looked like a Wrigley's piece of gum, you know, it wasn't marked or none. So I just cut like 10 rectangles, you know, <laughs> I ate like a couple, you know, 
Anyway, he told me later it was a yeah. 30 strip, you know? And I was like, oh, okay, sick. So anyway, I had a really long night, you know, day, night, whatever. And I, when I was coming down, I watched uh, Todd McFarlane spawn. And I was like, you know, and it's the whole thing. That's like Danto's Inferno style. Basically, this special forces dude dies in battle as he's plummeting to hell, you know, makes a deal with the devil. This clown face thing, clown guy. Oh, yeah. That basically okay. runs all the military oil machine, mm -hmm. you know, tobacco war machine. He, you know, he's actually running all the guys, you know, running the dudes and all the, you know, the, you know, but it's like. So anyway, I'm coming, you know, six tits of acid coming down, watching this, seeing this. And I'm like, that's going to be fucking me. That's a crazy way to look at it. I've seen the movie and now I know exactly what you're talking about. And I'm like, I never thought like that. Wow. You took it internally. Well, cause he just, he sold his soul to the mm -hmm. devil because he wanted to come back and see his girlfriend and the kid. Mm -hmm. And he comes back, he's fucking spawn. And so then he just starts killing bad people. And the devil's like, yeah, fucking get that bro. <laughs> Get it, dude, get it, you know? So, yeah. th so things started to really shift your perspective. Well, then I came back to Eugene. Yeah. I came to Eugene. My parents were out there. They're out a place called uh, Sweet Home outside Eugene. So I came there and, and then just started, you know, I come and I started working at this spot. My friend gave me a nugget Trinity. I'm like, that's what the, that's what, that's what's up, you know? That's real weak. So I had some purple Kush, you know, classic purple Kush from NorCal. And, you know, I had it in Southern Cal in 93, you know, and I was like, oh, that's kind bud, you know, like 70, bu 70 bucks for three gram eighth, you know, sick, you know, I miss a lot of those old strains, but dude, that was some, yeah. I think that was the Garberville pur purple Kush is the strain that we got. It was okay. just called purple Kush, but it was like, so anyhow, that being said, you know, like out there discovering that coming back to Oregon doing the thing and discovering the trend and then the people I didn't fit into these people you know it was a very hippie crowd you know what I mean like dead fam the whole thing and I'm like shaved head this guy you know like militant you know like <laughs> yeah. vibey you know yeah, like yeah, I'm down yeah. to like get high but like yeah like I'm kind of rowdy you know uh -huh. So then, you know, so then get, getting kind of tailored through just my own self-awareness of seeing people's reactions around me and my behavior, you start to, if you're aware, you start to tailor it, you know, you start to see like, this is bothering people. They're not liking this thing. This is affecting my life. This is affect, you know, and so like, anyway, fast forward a little bit, you know, drug, drug life, weed, this whole thing, you know, like, um, you know, I start growing get out of working in restaurants, do this whole thing. But with the psychedelics, they kind of came on its own. You know, I've always been like kind of fringe, you know, but I was always down to take double, you know? And when you take double, you die, you know? That's just how it goes, you know? Like it's, yeah. when, you, when you're the guy that has to have the more, mm -hmm. then you're the guy that's gonna have rough one probably too, you know? And so all those things, in turn, like, you know, my friend told me, you know, when I was 24 too, like my buddy, Evan, you know, he was my grow partner guy. He said, I was like, Oh, I want to be a teacher. I want to, you know, he's all pro the fuck are you going to teach? And I was like, you know, cause you know how it is when you first start getting high, you think you all these epiphanies that you're going to be able to actually eloquently explain mm -hmm. all these experiences and these realizations, you know? Yeah. And which is pretty funny. It takes a, you know, a couple decades really of life experience to be able to, and if you don't study the psychological terminology on deep aspects of how to even explain these diverse, you know, representations of mind and all your behaviors and how they work together, you don't even understand it. You don't even understand why you're an asshole, actually. <laughs> You don't even like understand that. what happened to you when you're yeah. a kid or what happened to you when you're whatever. Well, it's the energy that you put out comes back to you. So a lot of it is when people put out those thoughts and that and that harboring of emotion and all that stuff that they've twisted inside of them. And then when it comes out, it comes out in weird ways. Yeah. You know, it, I can always tell when someone can't give a compliment when it's like always a backhanded compliment oh dude and i'm i realize yeah, I'm like vibes, oh, okay <laughs> man like you know and not to like hate on it just to know like okay they're they, they're going through something yeah. or they're on this path and they haven't gotten there yet yeah where they can't be happy for it's it's always about well, it's always them yes 
you know, you'll know when you have, because we all have that friend, right? I was that guy. So I know we all have that friend, you know, because I was that guy. I, maybe I'm still that guy sometimes, you know, but the one that's always like, everything's against me. It's them. They're, they're, and he's an asshole. He's, a, oh, I can't believe they did that. I can't believe I did that. You know, what I realized when I had road rage that if you just slow down, road rage goes away. <laughs> it's, it's, and it, it's also because there, this is a, like, I think this industry is volatile. And so it gives you like an excuse to be like, yeah, man, they're all out to get me and I have to be the best. And if I don't, then I'm, it, it, there's a lot of me, 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 right. For in, sure. in a industry that's suppressive or been suppressive. Well, I mean, I don't time. know about this plant, but for some reason, everyone, whenever they have weed, they think they got the best weed on the earth, bro. If they grew it even more so, they think that, you know, <laughs> yeah. like they'll, they'll be like. You know, you always have some herb like this and someone will be busted out some untrimmed, undried, smelling like weird mold stuff. They'd be thinking it's chronic, you know? Yeah. Even when you got all this out on the table, they'll be like, no, dude, check this, you know? And you're like, well, what is that thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Is It's like, of course, when we grow this plant in the relationship, of, of course, it's the best then to us, you know? But it does something else, too, to our ego and to our awareness level. So what I feel like everything can be to a food medicine or a poison, right? And that's one thing that Saide Tupac, he's like said, you know, all things are either food, medicine, or poison, you know? So it's like, okay, too much of anything's bad, you know? And not enough of some things is bad too, but the middle way of most things is good, you know? Like, and that middle way, you know, that's when it becomes medicine, you know? But sometimes, you know, like, so when I had my really big ayahuasca dose, you know, my teacher tried to kill me really, you know, like, you know, you take the medicine that, cause so basically the reason he was here at this um, conference is cause he was scouting ayahuasca, trying to find the, who had the best ayahuasca, you know? <laughs> that makes sense. So he can get in contact with them, get their yes. ayahuasca, do what he needs to do with it. So you want the cleanest medicine in the you know, So form. of course that goes to the, you know, the Shipibos out of Pacalpa. They're the ones that are like, they're holding it down for at least for our lineage and family. The, so we get it from them, you know, and then he reduces it, you know, makes it easier to travel, but also easier to drink. I don't want to drink gulps, 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 you know, you 50 mils, 50 mils should be a standard dose. If you drink 50 mils and you don't get high, it's not good medicine. If you drink a hundred mils and you get really high, then that's right. That's what's up. You know? So what he would, he did, you know, and this was really crazy because, you know, I had ayahuasca a bunch of times, um, not prior to this Peruvian trip, but you know, prior to this moment, you know, um, multiple times. And, this is a moment after I, you know, spent a week painting this Buddha Tonka, you know, like this whole thing and just really like, you know, and he basically gave me a, um, a dose that was, I think it was about 200 milliliters, but it was of medicine that he had reduced the, the liter by two thirds. So I almost, you know, whatever, half liter plus to the head, you know, and I had my experience, no big deal, but. Then the next, about three or four in the morning, five in the morning, I started getting really sick, you know, because I didn't purge it all through the experience, whatever, no big deal, had the experience. But even when Umberto gave me the glass, I saw the glass that the, these other two people had, like this much. And then the glass I had was like this much, you know? So even when he gave it to me, he was like, fucking bye, bro. He yeah. wants you to learn something like- Well, even, even was crazy. So I, I had the experience, whatever. Next day, I was just throwing up, throwing up, throwing up, throwing up, couldn't stop throwing up you know, even mint tea, a little bit of tea, boo, blah, 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 you know, just like so much, you know, um, eventually then, you know, these two girls came that he, he, he's unexpectedly came, you know? And I was like, and they just started taking care of me. And like, he's all, Oh man, <laughs> I told him, I was like, Armando broke and they take me to the hospital, you know, I need IV, you know, I think because I'm too dehydrated. I think I need to get something, you know? So he's all, yeah, man. So they took me there. Ooh, um, wow. so I got IV there in, in Utabamba. Utabamba is like, um, in the sacred Valley kind of, um, in between Cusco and Ollante Tambo. So there, and I'm in this little, little hut kind of hospital hut, you know, and I remember being IV, you know, cause I remember just watching how many flies were like landing all over the IV thing, you know? Oh, just, wow. I was like, this is hectic, dude. Flies, so many flies in there, you know? And it just, <laughs> so anyway, I got the IV and whatever. <laughs> and he comes back and he's all, man, you, you worried me, you know? I was like, oh, 
He's all, you worried me, bro. I thought you were going to die. I thought I killed you, you know, because that, he told me how strong the medicine was and everything. Mm-hmm. But that's how his teacher did it to him, you know? <laughs> What's funny is his teacher is the same teacher that Terrence McKenna. They both had the same ayahuasca teacher. And even my teacher. Very cool. My teacher offered to heal Terrence, you know? But Terrence was into his trip, bro. Um, yeah. You know, when you're like using a wood chipper to, you know, chop the vine and you know you doing that whole thing it's no surprise you know and through this whole time though cannabis is still one of your plant medicines you're using totally i mean like Like, it's interesting to hear you talk about it though like you know this in the form of other psychedelics or other medicine you know because a lot of people it's like the it's like that i mean you got your pyramid right yeah (laughs) that one's at the top for me yeah because for me i already gave my life to this plant you know like you know one time i was like you know another one of those two high nights ate too much acid you know but then you're like contemplating your relationship to this plant yes, and how you grow it and how you bring it. And if you're going to get busted or not and all that thing. So what you're willing to give, I had to basically make a pact with the plant that I was going to give my life to this plant, but I needed to do it organically and then it would take care of me, you know? So I made that like pact on a, you know, meltdown night of LSD and, you know, I mean, these are phenomenal, bro. Like what, have you spelled that? What is this again? This this weed right here that I'm handing you. I think you keep going back to the show, bro. For <laughs> it is so, cr- yeah, bro. Wow. You, bro, does, like, does this not? Does this not? You know, I think when they when they named the show fur, because what this reminds me of, it reminds me of fucking polo the cologne polo in like a chauffeur listening to like 1980s MTV or some shit. You know, like that's what this smell like, just, dude. People would freak out. Like Dude. this is exactly what people are looking. This is a wave right here. I, I think this is. I rarely say this is exceptional weed. Like eat the joint that I had lit before because I had to let it go out because I was like, all right, I want. I have to keep up with this conversation. And this is psychoactive, strong, fresh weed, high in terpenes, high in THC. Like it hits all the boxes. All these strains. You have exceptional weed, man, and I have to say that a lot of breeders uh, don't grow great weed, but there are some that grow great weed, right? Like I've had a lot of breeders who breed well or breed cool genetics, but when I see the weed, I'm like, oh, it's okay, but you have exceptional weed, and you also have exceptional representations of weed that I think any connoisseur would be excited to get a hold of any of these. Yeah, I mean, like- I feel like we're all connoisseurs and, you know, we're just basically doing it the way we want it. And that's how I'm breeding. I'm, I'm not even a breeder, bro. I'm just like Paul and chucking and like making shit that I want to, you know, hit these certain gates of my mind, you know? So it's like, I'm, I'm just playing around, you know, like even, you know, so it's like. Does fire times fire equal fire? I think, you know. <laughs> that's the old lineage right it's like well man i got this one thing and it's fire and i got this other thing i wonder if we put them together that's where it always starts well, and you know you, when you see that with children too in genetics you see it with everything you know and so like when you start analyzing you know like and that's why if you start with gold you know gold in gold out just a reality you know and when you get really high on genetics that are stable. And that's the difference. Like there's other things that aren't so good. Right. Like, and they, they bring this hermaphrodite quality into it. Cause that's a part of what's happening now. Cause a lot of some of these best genetics came from a fucking herm mm-hmm. that basically it pollinated the room. They got seed. Those seed were you know, basically fire times fire. And then you got dank with some herm tendencies in here. Cause even you got chem dog and we all love chem dog, but the shit herms out and it throws these little things down low. They're not viable. But if you don't know, like I didn't know my first time when I did it and I saw that and I stressed it to the point where the whole room threw those out and I cut the whole room down. <laughs> and then my buddy, you know, my buddy Brent Fenario farms, he's a good, good old friend of mine, you know, um, Oregon Loke. Uh, he's all dude. He's all, those aren't viable. I was like, what? He's all, yeah, man, they just do that. And I was like, ah, I just cut down half the room. He's all, ah. damn, <laughs> you're a bunch of chem. He has a really cool Instagram. I've been a fan of following them. Oh, Fenario? Fenario? Yeah, 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 man. He's a, he's like, I remember one time me and him, we were like smoking weed with like Warren Haynes, you know, and like Warren Haynes is like a 
old legend guitar player. You know, he played with Almond Brothers and Government Mule, and he's fucking OG. So we're all backstage with him, you know? And Brent was there, you know? And I hit Brent's joint, and that's when I was like, hey, Brent, your fucking weed tastes really good, bro. What's up, you know? And he told me a couple things, and I rocked those things for a while, you know, after that moment. Because yeah. I was like, your joint tasted better than mine, and I don't have it much, and I want to know what's up, you know? But we're like... You know, we have a lot of respect for each other because we are kind of the two kids that stayed um, relevant, I think, in the that scene from the beginning times to the, you know, the yeah. later times and at least in our own way. And what we both did is we did true to ourselves. We did true to what we felt the plan was calling us to do. We stayed true to organics. You know, there's a time when I grew chem, you know, because I moved in with my buddy and we we're, he was doing like, you know, he already had the rooms going, you know, so we just did it and we were just doing top feed, you know, GH into vermiculite perlite into these, you know, two gallon pots. We'd water every other day and then do three weeks, just straight water, you know, and you know, two and a half pounds of light, <laughs> like without even trying, never pH nothing, you know? Yeah. Like straight up, you know? And that was like, and that was back in the days when we were like making our own, you know, centrifugal fan out of like the, the box. And then you put the car, the attic fan on one end and, you know, you put, you know, that was like that vibes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> what was crazy is I heard you say 50% of the world's ag nutrients come from Russia and Ukraine. Oh yeah. I do like a lot of the ag. So I didn't really, so my friend, um, Mariah Chappelle, she's basically Wilbur Ellis's head agronomist. When this whole thing was going down with, uh, Ukraine and, yeah. you know, Russia, Basically, the, the calcium, that's where a lot of the calcium come from, you know? Wow. And so the liquid calcium, every, you know, a lot of nutrients. And I watched, um, I forgot what it was, but I was watching this, uh, I don't know if it was the world, it was, it was what's that company? Um, it's a food company based out of Mexico, I think. Um, very big one, you know, Goya, Goya, Goya. Goya. I was just about it to was say It was the CEO that. of Goya. He was the yep. one that was saying all of it, you know, the, the, about what was about to start happening because of this whole thing. And, you know, when we look at, you know, the, the salt industry changed a lot these last couple of years. People don't know really, but it changed a lot in the back end, you know, what they're doing, the supplies, where they're getting them from, all the stuff. It's like, you know, and that's why organic kind of made a big push this last little bit because the United States under understands that if they're holding resources to that we need incentive for what we have and what we have is a lot of organics here we have a lot of chemicals too you know like i worked at this place trona out in um Searless valley out next to death valley um it's by ridgecrest that place where i grew up i worked at these chemical plants out there where they make a lot of the materials for glass and you know from like soda ash borax boron all this different stuff you know potash they're mining potash out of this lake bro and you know, the, besides nutrient companies who were getting all that potash was cattle companies. Cause I guess like they'd put it in the feed and, the, and make the cattle like retain water. Oh, and Lord. then they'd go to scale, like oh. kind of hydrated. Yeah. Supposedly. I mean, who else, what else Bro. is happening now, in that meat? When I, when I realized that I was 18 then when I saw them doing that and I was like, you know, you start to discover what's happening actually, that there's a system that no matter what we're not a part of it was it wasn't designed for us to be a part of it you know the the real people here you know like this was our this kind of was our savior on the sense of like giving people like me a voice even you know mm -hmm. that maybe i might have something to say that matters you know and maybe i might have an understanding of a relationship with wisdom plants power plants you know the plants that basically exacerbate our awareness in our reality you know and but also in that same content context the ignorance too it's almost what people say about um money getting money right is it it only inflates what's already there so if it's you know jealousy if it's this if it's greed that then it'll only get worse it's not going to get better and it's the same thing with love and caring and giving that will only get bigger because now you have more to love and more to give and more to care for. Exactly. And more, more freedom. Mm. And that's what they're trying to, you know, in my opinion, cut down right now is our internal freedoms. Definitely. By, by 
putting a stronghold on these external freedoms in whatever way they're doing it, it's all to divide us. It's all to put us in a stress response. It's all to put us in this singular mode instead of community mode, you know? Them, us instead, you know, me instead of us, you know? Because like, I traveled all over, the, you know, from when the COVID thing happened, everything. I kept traveling. I kept doing whatever I had to do, do everything I could. And what I realized, whatever they were saying on TV and the media isn't true. On, I mean, I already knew this, but like when you went out and I went to Wyoming, you know, and everyone in Wyoming, you know, they probably like voted for Trump or whatever, you know, they were the nicest, kindest people all over the whole United States I went to was Wyoming for some reason. Look you right in the eyes, say, you know, and, and nobody's talking about politics. Like, I don't care. What, I don't even care about politics. You know, like if, if I were to be judged, I guess I would be called a libertarian or something maybe because I don't even, I don't like the system. I don't want to be told what to do. And I want everyone to have equal rights, you know, and equal freedoms, period. Not like you more than other, this more than less than that, like equal, period, you know, like equanimity, like true equanimity. I don't want it just for humans, though. I want it for, like, beings, you know? Like, because, I mean, for me, the most special feelings I've had didn't come from think supporting myself, you know? They just didn't. Like, I, you know, I, you know, there's this really beautiful spot in Oregon. Last time I got barreled there, you know, like, it was so amazing. But even getting shot out, thinking you're not going to make it because the wall's bending right in front of you, and you getting shot out. Even after that, I just wish someone saw it almost. It was amazing feeling and just beyond self-gratification. And then I wished it was permanent, you know, meaning like someone could have saw it or there could have been a video or there could have, but no tears, no like open heart, no like chills, you know, none of that shit happened, you know? I just felt like accomplished, you know, I felt accomplished, you know, but I didn't feel good, you know, like the feeling that like, you know, like when someone's kid doesn't have seizures anymore because of the medicine you give because, or when someone, um, you know, doesn't have cancer, tumors, even doesn't have whatever sufferings. And cause you know, quality like, of life to the end, you know, when yeah. you give that, to someone, something happens that's very, very special. And it's really, really golden, you know, in a way that like I haven't experienced other ways, you know, unless I'm receiving really high level teachings, unless I'm experiencing the result of helping someone truly, you know, I just don't have those feelings, you know? I mean, when we talk about these things also, it'll generate that feeling, you know? Um, but like, I don't, I don't get it from serving myself, you know? Um, I don't get that same feeling. I might feel cool or feel good, but I don't get that feeling that we know is the most special feeling, you know, that like, that we, we get from helping others. We get from love. We get the action of like high level information. We get, you know, this thing happens that's a meter for humans and humanity and all beings really that, that gives us something that's beyond it all, you know, takes away any religion takes away any political, takes away any color, any this, any gender, any everything. And we're all the same, you know? I mean, we all have that same thing inside that's, that we all can connect on. And, and I haven't, you know, met a human yet that can't connect on that, you know, unless, you know, maybe, but I haven't met one yet, you know? And I've met some wicked ones, you know? And really, you know, you can even see like, because when you are a person that can hang with violent people and just, you know, disturbed people or distraught people or poor or wealthy or whatever in the slums of India and wherever, you, you understand we're all really similar, you know, meaning we all want to be a part of something. We don't want to suffer. We don't want the ones that we care about to suffer either, you know, but really we all want to be a part of something. And that's, what I feel is kind of this plant, even though there's so much reflection of humanity that comes out in the societal 
you know, reality of cannabis and the business of it and what's happening and how it's being exposed and expressed and who and what and where. But we're all doing it with this plant, you know, and the plant's the thing that's saying, hey, you know, Mm -hmm. and then so then everyone's expressions coming out. What was it like consulting? You consulted for Congress, state, federal level? Well, yeah. So I was um, on multiple rules advisory committees. Um, I was on the main rules advisory committee for the um, limits and labeling of recreational cannabis in Oregon. I love that, that Um, you were able to keep the limit and and they could talk to someone who's like, well, why should it be a hundred plant limit? I got got unlimited plant count in there, bro. Like I was was like, you know, I was pretty proud of that. It wasn't just me, but like, I was like, you know, like, so basically there was this Oregon cannabis pack started by Amy Margolis. There's about 10 of us involved in it. And we were kind of the main lobbying group of the pros that told all these politicians why from Blumenauer, Wyden, all of them, why it's good, why it's not bad, why it's going to be beneficial to our economy, community, medicine, everything, all the way to the point where we started going to DC and we made multiple trips to DC you know, consulting finance committee of U S Congress on 280 E and why it's whack and like all the whole thing. And, you know, 30 staffers and all the, you know, from, you know, consulting, like consulting, meaning telling these people why it's okay and why it's right. And this logical format of how we can utilize this as business and help make money, make revenue, make medicine. All they don't really care much about medicine. They just care about the, the lobbying and all the BS and, and, you know, the, to have people like us that can speak and walk the walk and do it eloquently and do it from not a non hippie stereotype. Cause you got to speak to what's, what they're looking for. for people sure. want to be like, yeah, but you didn't. It's like, well, you have to make it appeal to their side. So you know how to exactly. speak on the behalf of the culture, what they need, and then also speak on, well, they're about the money. They want to know about the revenue. They want to know. The loopholes, all that. Well, it was shit. so sick too, because like every day I made a point. You know, it was back when, like, you know, rosin first came on. You know, so I'd do these like big rosin strips. You know, and like, you know, I think we were one of the first people to actually even sell rosin at my dispensary in Oregon. You know, like, so it was like, you know, it's funny now. It's rosin so much better <laughs> than our like, you know, like hair straightener pressed hash. You know, like hot temp. Like it was gold and really nice, but. <laughs> Press bubble hash compared basically. To, compared to what you got going now, you know, yeah. it's like these, it's like a whole different level. This versus what we're like, you know, my God, you know, it says Mystery Haze Rosin from Fresh Frozen, actually. That one. Wow. Um, so, anyway, yeah, no, so it was really cool. What I'd do is I'd roll this huge joint, I'd smoke it to my head in my little truck, you know, that I, I had this little old Toyota truck that I was rocking, you know, because I, I love those old little Toyota trucks, you know, so I was rocking that. Smoke this joint to my head, you know, go in there right into speaking with the head of OLCC, you know, the main DOJ attorney, Shannon O'Fallon, you know, um, Andre Russo, the head of Oregon Health Authority, you know, then um, also, um, who else, you know, Jesse Sweet was like OLCC's guy, you know, the head of, um, got Ted Bunch, who was the head of ODA, got the head of... um, what organ pharmacology pharmacology there you know oh, so i'd go in there and i remember you know i'd go in there just so ripped on purpose because i wanted to sit right next to the doj attorney reeking like i'm reeking and being able to communicate and talk like i'm talking ah, break the stereotype and even at the end you know i was like <clears throat> oh, andre russo and shannon o'fallon the basically head of organ health authority and the head doj attorney um they were talking you know and it was the last meeting and i said hey you guys really sorry if i was like you know, I know I'm really um, passionate and outspoken about my views a lot, you know, and about how I, we did all this whole thing. She's like, oh, don't worry, John. You were actually the only one we were listening to. Wow. I was like, oh, wow. You know, the DOJ attorney said that, you know. But it takes people willing to do that crossover work. Some people are like, nah, that's the enemy. Or nah, that's, we shouldn't be dealing with people like, you know, and all this. And it's like, no, it takes people that are willing to speak both languages. There is no enemy, really, you know, like. Really, only the enemy is in ourself, I think, you know, but like, because even with all this thing, we don't want to be in opposition to the system, right? Like, we want their support to bring 
truth, love, compassion in a way. So we have to like, we have to understand how to work with them. You know, you can't be like fucking throwing rocks at people and expect them to be nice to you. You know, no matter who they are. And, no matter and what. even when I'm up yeah. at, all the way to the capital and everything, you know, these people like it's the system. It's not these people, you know, it's not the person. It's the system, you know, and there's so many gears in motion that they're like, these people could be really good people, but the system, they have to work with the way the system works. And the way the system works is the way politics works. It's the way it all works because that's the system that they've set up for it to work in. It's not because someone's a politician like Floyd Perzanski. He's like the champion of weed in Oregon, you know, he's a politician, you know, and but he's like the most kind compassionate for the people politician I've ever met, you know? And so it's like, okay, then you see all these people. Yeah, of course they're, they're making a business and a life off of this thing. And the way it works with politics, it's a lot of lobbying, lobbying, meaning people give you money and then you support their thing. Whatever that is. That's how politics work. Yeah. And I didn't realize how much it worked like pay to play. I did not know. It is so much like that. If you think it's not, you have some, I don't know what planet you're on, you know, it's like, cause like it works like that. And you know, it works like that because right before something signed into law, a bunch of changes happen right at the end. You know, like they take out unlimited plan count, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they leave it in for like two years while the rule may have. Yeah. Everyone's like, Oh my God. Yeah. And then you get six <laughs> and three of them or two of them are veg, you know? So it's like, yeah, <clears throat> you know, Things happen like that. And that happens from big money, you know, yeah. big business, you know, that we're not, we're not a part of that system. You know what? That's what people have to understand that the level we're all on, we're all on the same level. That's what, that's what the industry right now doesn't understand is that we're, we're all on the same level together. We shouldn't be fighting each other. We should be all working together. Because we're all on the same level together, you know? The people that are making the big money in the world, they don't care about us, you know? <laughs> it's just yeah. how it is. It is just how if it is. If they did, then we had, like, already signed a deal with a multi-billionaire that wants to just change the world and sponsor Green Bodhi to make this epic organic medicine and make genetics and, like, but there isn't that person. Mm -hmm. we've, we've had a lot of them come say they're that, but in the end, you know they're not that. Yeah. Why? Because that's not their intention. They did it for money. You know, they did it. They didn't do it to help others. And so like when the intention is to help others, it's altruistically minded. You know, you're wanting the benefit to them, not to yourself, because you realize if it benefits them, it benefits yourself. Why? Because we're all the same humanity, you know, and that's what people don't get. And what I realized through organics and really what was like, a big, huge thing for me is I got really sick. You know, when I was younger, I had um, heavy metal toxicity around the same time I first started studying Buddhism and practicing hard and all this stuff. But I'm like, why do I still want to just like, I'm violent, you know, well, I have a headache every day. I don't like to be touched. I'm like, feel like shit. You know, I feel something like wrong. You know, and I started explaining all these things to this person that was dealing with autistic kids and Asperger's, you know, cause everyone kept saying like, you got Asperger's bro. Like, you, are you autistic? What's up? I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know, because I have all these things, you know, these ticks, you know? Yeah. yeah. And he's, and, and, there, and anyway, I started explaining this doctor and he's all like, have you been tested for heavy metal toxicity? I said, no. He's all, well, I think you should. And I said, okay. So we, I tested for heavy metal toxicity and now it's 49 parts per million mercury, you know, which is safe as three parts per million, you know? And so you're like a third mercury. <laughs> third more than i should have been that's why that weed's so damn good dude so anyway like and i realized this i had all these amalgam fillings put in and then i was basically when i was climbing all these mountains i was talking about i'd have two cans of tuna and i'd like you know more mercury full send you know yeah so all these amalgam fillings all these vaccinations all these things because you know military you get all the good, good stuff in the military, you know, being a military brat, you know, the best of the best, you know, you get to experiment. <laughs> and so I'm assuming that a lot of that was from that, you know what I mean? And I'm not really sure, um, but 
comes out. And then I started doing all this chelation therapy and all this stuff and realized, okay, it was this. And, and I'm not kidding. After the first chelation, I felt almost enlightened. Because imagine having a headache every day for 10 years, you know, since you're a kid. You don't even know any better at since some point. Since you're a kid, man. Yeah. To where I'd be riding my bike in the desert out in Ridgecrest, you know, like I remember 120 degrees, you know. So like have such a headache when I'd go off the curb, I'd just be like, oh, just like jerking my head, you know, just to make it like that thing happen. Mm -hmm. Or then it wouldn't hurt for a second. Wow. So, you know, like I was super aggressive because of this, you know. Because with that kind of pain and everything. And, and you were understand. able to solve it through chelation yeah. and lowering your overall mercury content. Exactly. But then realize with candida, fungal growth, all this stuff that's related to this mercury and, you know, all this whole trip, you know, gluten intolerance, it all starts to stem back to this thing, you know, heavy metal toxicity and candidas and stuff, you know. So then I realized a lot that I had to change my diet, I had to change this, I had to change that, I had to do this, I had to do that. And then I started looking at all the mirror like perspectives of it all of, what's happening outside versus my gut and the universe. And it's all the same. It's all like a mere like perspective of things. How your stomach works is the same way soil works, basically. You know, you need your biome to be alive. You need fungi, you need bio life, you need carbs, you need carbon, you know, you need all these things, you know, so you need your, so it's the same. And so that was really a huge leap to the organics for me. Plants are so much like people. And, and if you include the growing process, it's almost exactly like every stage when I was, I used to explain it to close friends and it was easy to explain it when I would say like, well, just like plants and da, 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 da. And it would be like life experiences with your environment when you're growing up. And if you have a crazy environment, how wacky the, you know, it's like all these little things. Uh, if you could give advice to a grower having the experience and knowledge you have now, what advice would you give to somebody that's either first starting or, or whatever, just a, a cultivator that's passionate about cultivating? Keep it simple. Really simple, you know? And really like everything you're doing, mm -hmm. do it with your like heart, you know? Don't do it with your mind, you know? Do it with your heart. Try to feel from your, from your, from your true mind, you know? Not the brain thing that, you know, so like in Buddhism, it's like body, speech, mind. So the mind is our heart. You know, we have, there's neurons in the heart and everything too, they've discovered. So it's like, and, and, you know, that energy from our heart and versus the brain operating all your body, operating your thought, operating this thing kind of fucks things up a lot when you let it go for a ride. Your heart never does, you know? If you go from your heart, it doesn't fuck things up, you know? It never fucks things up because you're not there getting in the way, you know? John doesn't get up in there and be like, no, fuck that, man. You're, gonna, yeah. you're not going to get what you need out of that, bro. They're not going to take care of you like they should, bro. You know? Exactly. You know, you should be getting more. What's he making on it? Are you, man, do you see? He's getting shine. He shouldn't get the, like every, all the little voices, the negative. Sure. They come from the brain. And so that's why like body, speech, mind, you know, the body, the brain's really the body, you know, because when you try to isolate even where the John is, you can't find a place that John exists on its own. You know, it, it, if you, even if you take the brain out, is the John in there just in the brain? If you take the heart out, is it here just in the heart? You cut the arm off, you cut the, you know, which part of the, where's the John? Ah, it's, it's through a compilation of all the parts. Then this John thing happens. <laughs> I love that. You know, so then back it up a little bit. Instead of focusing on that part, focus on all the parts, all the conditions, all of what it takes, you know? And really, if as a beginning grower, when you just start to see the similarities of nature and ourself, that relationship, I think, sp really speaks spawns the most growth and the most awareness out of how we connect with anything especially a wisdom plant that's gonna guide us you know this plant guides us you know like i'm not even like i do what i want but really you know i'm doing it because i'm embedded with this plant in every cell of my body you know and that medicine and that um really gate to awareness 
in every way, if you use it with the right intention, it all starts to happen then, you know? Cause like, as we see, we can have, you can have good herb, mm -hmm. look great. You smoke it, it's garbage. Don't smoke right, don't taste right, don't feel right. Looked bomb. But it didn't have any other category, any other, you know, facet, you know? No, no other box checked, you know? Why? Probably because they didn't care, you know? And like, even when you come down to like, you know, my mom, she, she, like, she, she makes me, she's 80 years old. I built an apartment out on my property for her. So she's, you know, has a spa. We take care, you know, everything. But she'd be making kimchi still, you know, all the time. And like my kimchi's junk, you know, compared to her. She'll straight tell me too, you know? <laughs> she'll, you know she's like, like, this is like a sea batch, bud. Not even, it's like, I'll tell you exactly how she did it. Cause my son Bodhi was watching and I was like, you see how I had it? You know, it was like that my whole life, you know, cause you with Asian mother, you know, if you weren't perfect, mm -hmm. you were very far from it, you know, <laughs> like very, even if you're perfect, you're still very far from it. You know, that's and, good though. It's this progression that you're always chasing. My goodness. To be a little bit better or to make something better. You would have to, or she would chase you, you know? <laughs> okay, okay. You know, it's like when you got like Genghis Khan's like great, great granddaughter, you know? <laughs> it's wicked, you know? Yeah, here, yeah. You know? So she's, anyway, so she, she That's just. why your herb's so good. She started moving in, you know, she started like, you know, my parents, my, I have a property out in the country. My dad has his RV on, you know, and so they have their space so they can still, you know, be cool and like love each other. <laughs> You know, it's hard after 50 years you know? with anybody anyway. So like, so that being said, you know, she'd come in and I'm like, oh, mom, I made some kimchi, you know, she's like, oh, really? I'm like, yeah, you know, she's like, okay, we'll eat it. I guess we can see how bad it is. That straight up Bodhi was like, looks at me like, I'm like, told you, you know, next time she comes over jar of kimchi like this big, you know, I don't, I brought you the jar so we don't have to eat yours. <laughs> Straight up. And Bodhi was like, oh my God. It was like, you know, it was a kind of tough crowd around my house, you know? My dad retired military, you know, 20 plus year, you know, Vietnam, but whatever, you know, the whole thing. Asian mother that was like, you know, and it being in a different time, you know? Mm -hmm. It was time you still beat your kid, you know? All that, though, got you to where you are now, not to give it an excuse. No, it's that, that is every single step, you know? And that's what people don't get. And even when I asked my teacher, you know, um, you know, about my son, you know, I said, oh, I, I think I'm a little too strict with him, you know, and I think I should, he's all, you know, John, he's like, he's really intelligent, you know, and if you don't, if you aren't strict, he's going to take advantage of you, you know, he's all, plus it's your job so we can all enjoy him, you know? And so like, I've, Ooh, that's deep. I've been a little strict, but I see who he is and how he can handle and what he's, his, his heart and how he, connects with people in a, in a really hard time, you know, in a really hard time where, you know, we're in a very, you know, liberal oriented community and, you know, and he's getting called anti-feminist cause he's, you know, identifying as straight. So we're in that kind of community, you know? And so, and he's still in that realm swimming and handling it perfectly kind, doing his best, of course, having huge blowouts like any fifth grader. But not letting it affect the energy he puts out to, amongst other people. And I've always been really, really big on that with him and not trying to put any of that down because my dad was very, you know, I want to play, I wanted to play saxophone. You ain't playing sax, you know? I want to do drums. Fuck that. You're not doing drums, you know? Yeah, I felt that. I wanted to do drums too. You know, I'm like, yeah, so yeah. of course my kid's got drums. He's got keys, everything, <laughs> you know, like anything he wants, you know, he's yeah. got it, you know what I mean? And, and I don't put any of that down. And he's like, Got a really good ear, you know, as he's teaching himself piano, he sings, he's like, you know, he can ear to, it's like, I'm like, so cool, man. Cause I'm like, I'm, I'm scared to even like hear myself sing, even though I, I know I can sing in key and all that stuff. I'm like, you, you probably won't ever see, you know, I, I, when, I, when I'm singing in front of someone, I'll probably be near enlightenment, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's, so that ain't going to No, happen. it's true. I think when you get older in life, you realize one thing, especially when you've dedicated yourself to a craft like you have and, and, and now had this enlightenment and you've had done it over 20 plus years is that anything you're passionate about, if you give it your all, you'll make a career out of it. And then hopefully if you want something more, right, you leave a legacy behind or genetics behind that people for a hundred years will still be taking your keepers and making other things with it. It's somewhere in the lineage.
it's even like when, um, you know, like I was talking to my good friend, you know, who I call Bodhi too. I, I, I call him by his name, but I'll just call him Bodhi here. Plant more seeds, Bodhi seeds, fucking legend of legends. You know, he's a G good friend of mine. And I love that guy. And, you know, <laughs> we were talking about breeding, you know, and he's all like, yeah, you know, I don't consider myself a breeder, you know, cause we we're talking about, you know, people calling us breeders and stuff. And I was like, I'm really psyched that I never considered myself a breeder hearing you say that. <laughs> That's the humbleness that comes with um, being through a tough journey and experiencing a bunch of stuff like you just spoke about. Man. It comes from that, though, is someone who is a breeder saying, well, I just, you know, I'm just doing my thing. I'm just, you know. That's why when you meet, I love getting around OGs, like, you know, and not just to put a label on someone, but someone who has been in it for long enough to have perspective. Mm-hmm. That's a better way to put it as an OG and uh, the love, the compassion, that's the, just the conversation is enlightening and it's energizing and it's powerful and it lasts years later. I'll remember the interactions I was involved in where I got to just listen and have my little two cents if I had experienced something that they're speaking on. But it's cool to be around guys like you. OGs in the market and there's so much love and compassion people I think a lot of people could take a lesson from that well uh, that doesn't come from nowhere that comes from a long hard journey of being real a lot of these people you know what I mean like really in it really living it and real people too they aren't putting on a show and doing it for anything because like the OGs with true perspective most of them have a similar thing too in a lot of ways you know their own demographic of where they grew up and how they're raised and all that stuff. But there's this thing, this extreme love for the plant, this huge commitment to help others through the plant and to hold that. And that's what the, like what I noticed all these guys that a lot of us are friends and know each other well and respect each other. Well, cause you know, like, because it's a small, small thing. And, you know, I felt really fortunate because you know, with Santa Cruz and everything and coming there and being welcomed there and the people I came in contact with there, you know, like, you know, Kagi One, Michael Fradis, he's like the guy, you know, and that I just so happened synchronistically, my first collab was with him in 2012 with the, you know, the Coastal Haze, you know, Big Sir Holy by the Hazy Kush, you know, and like, you know, when you look, when I look back on it now, I'm like, wow, man, that's beyond luck, you know, and then we're close and we're actually Dharma brothers, you know, and, you know, Kagyu is one of the lineages of, of Buddhism, you know, okay, of Tibetan Buddhism. The Kagyu lineage is one of them, you know, the yeah. Galupa lineage is what his holiness is a part of and the Karmapa is the head of the Kagyu lineage. So he's connected. That's why it's Kagyu, one, you know, so anyway, we have this, these, these, these other, you know, things. And, but what I noticed of that time people noticed who was bringing it for the love of it. And a lot of those people are still being recognized for their love of it. And that's, what's really cool. And a lot of them are getting put on. Cause you know, really we had to all make a pivot. A lot of us to the genetics thing, to the seed thing, to the legal thing, you know, where was our legal foothold going to be, you know, okay, we got a rec license or two or whatever. We got this or we're connected to this and medical this, but what's the big pivot, you know? And, for some of us, it was with the whole, you know, farm bill and everything. Seeds are legal, man. And you're, you're not going to just jump in right now and be some guy that's going to make it happen in the seed game. No matter how much you think so, you want so, and all that. If you don't have something that went way back, I don't think people will respect you. And, and the people that, you know, the breeders that are breeders won't, that's for sure. Cause it's a hard crowd anyway. <laughs> and you got to do it for you. <clears throat> Don't do it for them. Exactly. Do it for you. Do something you're excited about. Take a strain that you either found or is something that you're so loving and start to create it with other things. Do, do it for you. And then, yeah, if, if seeds make their way out or you decide to move some seed, you know, that's also cool. But when you go into it, I love how you bring up intention. That's the intention. Why are one of the things we used to always do is you'd have two fire strains like this and you'd be like, man, this is our such a good. And then look at, can you imagine if we did these together 
and you know before you knew like how to feminize Brie and all that and that was such the conversation so you would grind them up together and roll a joint together and have these conversations amongst growers these communal conversations just about the passion the love furthering this well that's why that gets me back to talking with you know with Bodie that I was telling you about mm -hmm. That we were talking about that and saying, oh, he's like, I ain't a breeder, you know? And I'm like, oh, sick, you know? Thank goodness. He's all like, and we were talking about seeds and what our, what our view is of, you know, when you buy this stuff, what happens? I'm, and we both have the same view. If you buy it, you can rename it. You can breed with it. You can do whatever you want with it because it's out. It's out in the public. You know? That's a rare perspective. And it's, it's not ours anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and we were talking about that and that's his perspective. I was like, sick you know like because i feel exactly the same way you know and like it's yours now do your thing with it we, we we made this so you can do your thing with it so you can express yourself through this plant so it can express itself through you more and like all we wanted was just out there everywhere seeds everywhere you know and that's why because it's like a virus, right? Like mm -hmm. we just infect the whole planet, you know? And if our intentions entangled every single trichome head, look at it a little blessing pill with all that little medicine in there of, you know, depends on what your intention is for us, you know? It is these things, you know? Mm -hmm. Compassion, love, equanimity, joy, you know? All these things. And we want, to, want everyone to have that. And one thing for sure that we experienced that if every time someone takes a toke, and they have that little bit of peace of mind. Doesn't matter if it's recreational, if it's medical, if it's legacy, if it's beyond before all these terms came up and it was just how it was, you know? That's what's up, you know? Just that it is, you know, and that it's happening and that we're like pushing it, you know? Mm -hmm. And it ain't to be a breeder, it's to be like beyond all these stupid fucking labels, you know? It's to be together, you know? We got this plant that's like, the whole planet psyched on stop like let's not fight and let's like all do it together well you know meaning express ourselves through this plan let it express itself itself through us and we bring it how we all bring it without worrying about what other people are doing like i mean I, like I, what i want to do is create stuff that i'm going to want to smoke all day every day only that strain for years that it's one of my four jar or it's 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 one of the three different nugs that i'll throw in my jar that day because I know what I want to vibe with. You know, Proper I, intention. I want one of those nugs. I want to create one of those nugs. I want to be able to do that, you know, for everyone to have that experience. So then they can do it, you know, because if yeah. it's all entangled in the every single trichome head, because I mean, if I mean, they're proving that like right now we're sharing so many electrons, you know, even me and you and into other dimensions, you know, because they proved that already, you know? So then it's like, so then what, you know, what, what is the debate about, you know, that exactly. we can't entangle our, our, our reality to this plant and use this as a carrier and a server to like something special everywhere. Connectivity. If you could bring one strain back, what would it be? One uh, strain. Big Sir Holy, this one cut okay. that was in Eugene, um, this Big Sir Holy cut, it was like insane. Big Sir Holy. It was Big Sir Holy, but it was, you know, Michael has the, you know, that lineage and everything and creator of all that. But like this cut was, you know how it is. It's one of the Finos. You know, what's really funny is the guy that had it in, in Eugene, who it came from through Eugene, was also named Mike. <laughs> and I told, I was like, dude, you know, you want to hear it? That was funny. You know, there was this big sir cut that was going around Eugene. That was so, it was like the, it was the shit, you know? And it was the, the holder, the guy that it came from was guy's name was Mike, you know, <laughs> he's like, what? That's cool. I was like, yeah, you know, so it's like, but it, I don't, I don't think it was that lineage of his line because it mm -hmm. didn't feel that way personally, you know? Yeah. Um, but you know how it goes. There's, so that's the reality with the hazy Kush when he put it to the big Sur, that was huge for me because I made the hazy Kush trying to recreate the high of that big Sur cut. So then, it just so happens my first collab is that. That's epic. You know? That's epic. <laughs> With like legendary, like Kagiwa, Michael Frost, Coastal Steeds, you know? 
Like, so it's like, where can people find your seeds now? Like if I want to um, buy some of your seeds or some of the genetics that you guys are putting out. Yeah. GBgenetics.com. Everything's on there. That's our main website that's supplying the seeds. GBgenetics.com. Also, uh, you know, lots of different banks, Seedsman. That's a big heavy hitter for us. And we love those guys and they take care of us really well and been doing really good with them. So what's something if, if I'm <clears throat> hunting down a strain, what's something I should really pay attention to? Anything with anything hazy line, you know? Yeah. And it's really phenomenal. this, 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 um, this 89 NL that we got, it's, I mean, the two phenos we got out of it encompass 70% of cannabis, in my opinion. And, you know, the, the number four pheno I have of it, super chem. Let's see if I can find it here. Super. It's insane, you know? Um, is this the one, the one that I rolled That's the up? mystery haze there. Unbelievable. And, that, and that's, that you're going to find in that hazy oh. lineage. If you're, wanna, if you're wanting to find the mystery haze, it's basically the hazy kush back cross. This is phenomenal kush. weed. Like both the joints I rolled up, I, I haven't smelled sour like this in a long time either. The sour. Oh, dude, that, I've, I've actually never smelled sour like that. That AJ sour <laughs> diesel. <laughs> exactly. Like, it smells like tractor grease. You know what I mean? I can just tell by the outside which one it is. Like you, just the structure and the calyx and the color, gnarly man. That is a gnarly sour, dude. Insane, right? Yeah. Thank you, crazy composer, Dave, the guy. All these jars are absolutely beautiful, and this is why you got to get on fsotd.com or also on the YouTube to see that's some the, of the. That's the eighty nine NL, so you can smell that. That's where the like chem line comes from, you know, sour kind of, really funky. It's like really got a interesting, t you know. So it's like. When I look at that strain, oh man, you just like, you see how much goes through it. So we put that by everything that we could and that's going to, that's getting tested now and we're excited about that. So anyone that's looking for the genetics that they have, all these growers have the conversations like, man, remember this? Remember when we used to have terps like this? Remember when the weed used to be sticky? Remember, right? <clears throat> I, I hear these conversations all the time. I would be hunting down your seeds. I'm just being totally transparent because these terpenes, these strains that we're smoking and I'm seeing, I haven't seen, and I've done 105 episodes. This is rare genetics still. I haven't yeah. seen these in 15, 12 to 15 years since I was able to experience a lot of these same terpene profiles and the level of quality, exceptional. Your team killed it, bro. Mm, thank Absolutely. You. Thank you. Thank you. Man, what are you working on right now? What's the new, what's the, can you give us a hint towards anything that you're uh, cooking up or what you just finished? Um, we're doing some testing on some stuff, but really the Afghani line that we've, uh, we're testing the uh, collab with uh, Coastal, with uh, Kagyu. That's, uh, that's being tested now. There's some really interesting stuff coming out of there. Um, also, the 89 line that we're testing too, just making sure everything's good, you know, because don't want to don't don't want to put out any weird weird stuff you know yeah but some things happen you know so seeing those things and basically measuring all the variables and you know it's been it's been really cool but really the genetic site you know gbgenetics.com that's really like where you're gonna see the first hit of things you know um seedsman of course you know we got a lot of stuff dark dark star you know your sativa is getting on so got it attitude and we'll know. put all the links everyone will have all the links below to like all your social media to keep up because i love the amount of information you put out that's how i really started to be like man i started asking our team like we have to get Bodie on we have to we have to get green Bodie. like we have to get this guy on because like i've dived deep into some of the conversations you've had you've had with foes and some of the other stuff and then even just the clips you post like i really enjoy your social media it brings me back to why I started cultivating and the love for the plant. Like it just reminds me a lot of this is why pure thoughts, pure intention, move towards a better place, stay positive, even in a negative this and a lot of turmoil happening, like stay focused. It's, I mean, it's really the way, you know, like gotta, gotta, gotta stay happy these days, you know, and if you're not happy, it's okay, you know, because. We all struggle, you know, it's tough out there. We all deal with a lot of like, you know, mental health stuff these days and it's 
and how do how do we handle that and how do we cope with this medicine to a lot of us, you know, mm-hmm. and that's what a lot of us are really gravitating towards this plant so heavily because a lot of us have mental health issues, you know, one way or another, you know, and we're just trying to survive right now. And that's what people need to understand is just give each other a break, you know, like it's fucking hard out there, you know, it is. And we all need to work together Yeah, because it's only going to get harder. <laughs> it never gets easier. No. So yeah, just remind, it's been a pleasure. Episode yeah. 105, first smoke of the day. Thank you so much. Man. Thank you for making Super it, man. Cool. Okay. For real. Super cool. First Smoke fam, thank you. 105 Bodie. So if you like this video and you want to see more videos just like it, I need you to click right up here and make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Yo, yo. First Smoke family, right here.